DNA lab. Yeah. <laughs> and there we go. And with that, the Challenge Cup has officially started. And Cosalina, what in the world? Cosalina's coming in with a Lola Pop. Oh yeah, that's right. She's been working on that pocket Lola Pop with the explosive set. There's the nade. And this is going to go against Warlon, who's going with the double cooler rings. Yeah, this ought to be a very interesting set then. So, Cosalina on the left, Warlon on the right. And already you can see the ice chain trying to come up. Obviously, wanted to curve around, especially with DNA Labs. It's just, it feels like the Warlon's trying to go for that kind of setup where it's like, they've got two arms, they can at least curve around pretty much anywhere on the stage. And... Cosalina is going to play from range. Like, you, you just know the Ice Dragon, it just excels at being at range. And already you can see that if it doesn't hit, then it's going to poke on through. It's unguided, but it's going to do its explosive damage, goodness. Yeah, patient play here from Warlon, just jumping in side to side, trying to get those cool ranks to curve around the side, but. That does leave uh, the center wide open for those nades and ice dragon folks to just keep running after one after the other. Now, Cosalina has got rush, will not hit it though because Warlon jumps and shoots a boomerang around the side. And now Warlon's going in, but that rush will also go off to the side. Yeah, just an unfortunate miss there for Warlon. Couldn't quite find the mark. It is already into critical and. Constantly just playing the patient game, letting the grab come out as far as possible before flinging that nade out and just punching right on through. Looking for one more tag, even just the slight lick of the dragon will do it. And that's exactly what she was looking for. Cobra drops down, hits the laser, and that's going to be a point. That lingering hitbox for dragon is something you definitely have to watch out for. Even if you get a counter hit and it does stay uh, in the air a bit longer. It certainly does as we continue on to point number two. Goslina already with rush available, Walon just needs to uh, start charging up that little bit more. I'm just gonna turn that down just a little bit so it's a bit more quieter. Grab is gonna come through and Cobra obviously doing that little bit more damage with the grabs and so far coming a bit more custom to it but Goslina is gonna stop that dead in his track with a 320 rush. Yeah, there's the rush, there's the one she's been trying to get up close close for. But now Koselina is going back to the distance a bit, trying to get Wolan to approach to uh, get that rush in. They missed early, but no, the activation is too close to the charge nade, and Wolan loses that rush. Yeah, Falls over the grab, so very much still in it, but yeah, that, that area explosion, never underestimate it. If it's too close to you, it will stop you, and it's just enough to send Wolan down. That's going to be critical. Tried to shield through, but unfortunately, the grab does make a connection. Cosalina looking for one more poke, and that will do through a tube into the corner, and Cosalina is going to lead the set by pointing out. That was a nice grab onto um, Warlon's dash there. And with that, we're going to see Cosalina then ban the next two stages, and Wallon will pick from the remainder of the set. Uh, we can already tell you that we have results from one of our matches. Okrum has taken Panther out in a 2 0 match, so Okrum will take on Junior in the next round. That's going to be pretty interesting. Yeah, I was going to say, two very spicy matches already in round two Shetty versus Rafa and Junior versus Okrum. Take your picks there, I honestly don't know. <laughs> Which way that's gonna swing. But uh so far oh <laughs> while I'm unfortunately picking a stage that was banned, so hold on a moment. <laughs> um but yeah, in terms of in terms of the Lola, I mean, you obviously saw how Coslina was playing it. It's like, would get up close when the rush was ready because the laser does massive damage. And then immediately backpedals because, again, they know once that rush is still charging up, the dragon excels at range. And it feels like Cobra wasn't playing aggressive enough. It looks like we're going to go to Scrapyard for game two. Yeah, I'm going to see one of our counter picks up straight away. One got banned, the other got picked. Fair is fair. Uh, Wallon's got those verses on the back, but he's going to stick with the double cooling by the looks of it. Cosalina, meanwhile, 
Thinking about the dragon? Nope, gonna bring in the hottest of slaps. Let's see how Wallon maneuvers on this because Scrapyard, with all the inclines, is a fairly tricky stage for Cobra's movement. Yeah. There's one nice slap hit from Kosa. <laughs> yep, St starting as she means to go on with a whole lot of heat, and obviously once the arm, uh, once the charged up slap does connect, the fire element means that you are immediately hitting the deck. That's just part of its perk. And uh, even with the slightly bigger arms for the cooler ranks, Kobra is not hitting as much as they'd like to, and he's going to get caught with another grab. Yeah, Kosalina keeping distance very well there. Roland tried to approach, but that was a nice grab to get them off. And now Kosalina does have the rush ready. Both players having the rush ready, actually. Let's see who gets the opportunity to use it first. Yep. I mean, Kosalina will take these little tags because they're just dishing up the damage that little bit more. The second Wallon gets like a couple pokes in, the grab is there from Costalina. It's gonna get caught by the Cooler Rang Rush, but didn't actually take that much damage. Went down way too quickly. Having said that, Wallon is gonna full on shield Costalina's rush, so uh pretty much pretty much a uh, full on negate from both sides. With 20 seconds to go, Wallon has got to find some big time hits here, otherwise this is pretty much going to go to Kozalina, who's still lingering above the halfway mark, and, well, with 5 seconds to go, I don't think Kozalina will be losing this anytime soon. Yeah, there's another nice grab from Wallon to counter, but that is not going to be enough. Yep. And so with that, Kozalina is just looking for one more point to book their ticket into the next round. Actually going to trade off the hot slap and bring in the Ice Dragon. And Wallon gonna stick with double Coolerang. Wallon having the early lead here, getting a nice one too, and into the rush, but that is a bit too far away for that to connect reliably. And that's a nice grab punish from Kosalina. Yeah. There. Kosalina playing very, very patient. Like I said, when Kosalina has her good day, she knows exactly what she's doing, just waited for that entire thing to end and just caught Wallon out, but isn't able to use the rush of their own, caught out by Wallon's Coolerang. Nicely done. Yeah, tries to use that rush there as a response to pairing the first boomerang, but gets hit by the second. That's unfortunate. Now both players resetting into neutral. Costa gets a nice freeze and then into the grab. Yep. And you notice how Wallon is charging up that rush pretty quickly, but uh, Costa is not going to worry about that. Every single time they get into a good good moment, especially bouncing away with uh, Costa like. You never want to give Lola Pop the high ground like this, because it's like she can just inflate there, she can stay there, and just bounce around, and that is a beautiful counter. Nips to the right hand side, fires in with the rush, and that's going to be a KO, and Kosalina will win the set two points to nil, and will advance to take on Yam in round two. GG. Kosalina dominated that set, definitely caught a, a, a lot of Warlon's movements, constantly getting one punch or a grab on Warlon's short pops from side to side. And we, with that, we have our lineup for round two fully completed. Uh, Yoshi taking out Nea 2 0 as well. So, all 2 0 matches in round one. So, it does mean round two will look like this Replicant will take on Yoshi, Shady will take on Rafa, Junior versus Aquim, and Yam versus Kostlina. In the underground bracket, Ne will face the loser of Yam and Kostlina. Uh Panther will face the loser of of Shetty Rafa and then the other two will take on each other from whoever loses between Rep Yoshi and Junior Ocrim. And we are just getting word now that our next match is going to be <laughs> Shetty Rafa. Oh that's a good one. Oh I'm looking forward to this. Like you, you, you wanna, you wanna stacked match. This is gonna be your stacked match right early on. So uh, sometimes it's just how it goes. But in this occasion, who's your money on here? I don't know. This, this could go either way, honestly. I am, I'm admittedly biased towards Rafa, my fellow uh, German good Gova player, and the better one. Um, but also, uh, but I, like, my heart says Rafa, but my brain says Shady, because Shady's been 
just consistently grinding and consistently getting high finishes. Yeah. Whereas Raph only really just shows up once in a blue moon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no joking on that one either. Like, we're comparing the two. They've both won this cup before, which is why it's always, like, a little annoying that they fight each other in round one, because that's just sometimes how it goes. Um, but the last, but the one and only time Rafa has won this cup was the second ever Challenge Cup. <laughs> and we've had 46 of these now, so you get the general idea of it. Shetty is a two-time winner, last winning this on the 43rd cup, so... Yeah, it's been a, it's been a long time for Rafa, so... Let's see if they've still got it as they come in with the Kid Cobra, we're used to seeing that. What are they thinking? They've got that Hydra in the back, but they're not going to bring it out just yet against this Ribbon Girl. Going to go Burchuk and our not-so-hot slap. Shetty, Ribbon Girl, as we're probably expecting. Burster and a Burchuk as well. Yeah, both players are, do have fairly aggressive playstyles here, and what better place to play aggressively on than Sparring Ring. Rafa getting the early center stage control, putting Shetty into the corner. And there's a rush ready already. But Shady escapes from that. Yep, he's gonna get caught out at the last second. Tried to go for a, for a punish towards the end of that, but uh, so far the damage from Rafa has been relentless. Big time grab, not quite the KO. Just looking for one more little poke, and Shady only just getting rush available now. So you'd think Shady will probably hold on to this rush until the next point, because well, either that or they'll wait until Rafa gets the KO range. But if they keep throwing out these arms consistently. Rafa will probably get rush available as well. That was a nice roaster hit, and the Shady could still very much turn things around, but there's a double hit! And that is going to be the end of Shady there. We're going to start off round two now, and Shady switching to the slab. Yep, Shady's got a We're going to see if things start off different. Shady going in up close for that rush, gets it with the aerial close range glove, and... <laughs> gets a little grab poke on the way down as well. Rafa now with a rush of their own. He's gonna curve her in with the slap. It's really just down to who gets hit first with the slaps at this point. Because both are designed to curve around. Is this gonna be a success? No, it's not gonna be a successful juggle. Unfortunately, Shetty was just a little too far away. And uh, gets the first hit, but nothing else. Yeah, that was unfortunate. Usually the bird trucks are really good at picking up those aerial confirms, but that was just a little bit too far away. Yeah, you hate to see it when it happens like that. Having said that, Rafa's bouncing back beautifully. Got, managing to follow it with a lot of 1-2 combos here. They're incredibly quick. And another grab is going to send Shetty right down onto the cusp of the KO mark. Has a rush of their own. It's going to commit to it. Does land it. Don't think it'll KO from here. So that oh, no, actually Rafa lands on his feet. And goes for the rush. And oh, it did hit initially. But Shetty managed to get away. It's just, they're both looking for one more hit. Arm wig on the left-hand side. Shetty can't afford to have that arm go down at this stage of the match. <laughs> they're both looking for just one crucial little hit. Arm goes down, and there it is! <laughs> oh, wow, that was close. Yeah, it was incredibly close. But like I said, Shetty could not afford to have that arm go down. Rafa kept up the pressure. The arm broke. Left arm disabilized, and Rafa just about secures the point but that really could have gone either way three words center stage control if you just skip to a random moment in the vod you'll probably see rafa in the center of of that stage of sparring ring <laughs> yeah just constantly pressuring shady in the corner with the jump grabs with the one twos rafa, rafa was in control it was yeah. Also, I do apologize, the uh, uh, the overlay had not s correctly switched Rafa and Shetty's tape, so it looked like Shetty was playing Cobra, which definitely does not happen. So uh, it should be fixed now for the next match, I do apologize there. But yeah, that was... Shetty nearly stealing that, taking it to a match free, and very much could have done so. But like I said, the pressure that Rafa put them under, it's like, anytime you see Rafa play Cobra, they're playing aggressively. They're always in your face with it. It's like, yes, you can have the mobility and the uh, agility that Ribbon Gold possesses with all the double jumps and uh, the double jumps and dashes and whatnot, but you can only stall out an aggressive Cobra so much. <laughs> Shady, undaunted by the stage, is going to run it back to Sparring Ring. 
Interesting decision. So, does this mean the Shetty has an idea of what they want to do here? Like, are they going to switch arms, you'd think? They could also switch characters. I know Shady has a very good twin tell, which could work against Cobra in this uh, situation, but probably not. Hmm. We will assume... The Raven Girl is the signature here. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, I've seen I've seen Shady pretty much play a tournament where they used to just always use twin tell, and there it is. There is the it twin is. tell. So clearly, that's that's what they're thinking of here. The Twin Tail is definitely the pick here. I know um, Rafa does usually use a Megawatt in the set, but switched it out to a Burchuk here to catch um, uh, Ribbon Girl easier, but that definitely is a bit harder against Twin Tail. Against Shady's double medium set, you want a heavy arm in there. Oh, yeah. So this is a good switch by Shady. Oh, and even with all of that slow motion, <laughs> the actual order did not save Shady from a very up close and personal grab. And make that two for Rafa there, and make that three. Oh, no. Jeez, I hope you like grabs because Rafa has got you sorted for days. Arm weak on the left hand side, not gonna get caught out this time. But Shady knows that they are a poke away from going down, and finally cools things down a bit with a grab of their own. You just want, you just waiting, waiting for Rafa to just get that last poke. They've got both got rush available here, and Shady could oh, KO from this range. range. Yeah, Shady could easily turn this back with a rush, but the bird chuck is gonna swing straight on through. Don't forget that chuck can fire off in one of two ways, and Rafa making good use of that just came straight on through. Shady did not see it coming, and with that, Rafa just needs one more point. Yeah, even though it's it's spring outside and the sun is shining, Rafa is still snowballing here. <laughs> Just consistently getting pressure over and over again. Oh. But a little bit too aggressive here, jumping straight into Shady's <laughs> rush. Yeah. So let's see if Rafa can turn things around, but no, Shady dashes to the side just on time to avoid that bird truck rush. Yeah. My broke the arm on the right hand side with the slap and now Rafa is just Again, once this momentum starts going, if one slap comes in, Rafa's just going to start juggling you right into that corner. And it's so hard to breathe sometimes in these situations, but Shakram does get the stun into a grab confirm. Shady retaking control here, retaking the center. And one more hit will uh, set things up pretty well. Shady has the rush now, is going to try to catch Rafa's on the extension. <sighs> Rafa jumps back and avoids. Yeah, that's how quick the Cobra is. It's just able to get out of there, gets the rush in and gets the KO, beautifully done there, well timed from Rafa, had the wherewithal to just use Cobra speed, avoid the rush completely and then gave it a couple seconds before committing to their own, realizing that Twintel had fully committed to that push and Rafa is going to take a 2-0 and with that is going to send Shetty down into the underground bracket, nicely done. Yeah, nice counter rush by Rafa to end things there, just catching the arm extension. So, we've got Rafa moving over Shady. I don't think any of the other sets have ended yet, though. No, I'm just giving it a quick refresh, and yeah, nothing yet. So, it is interesting to see. So, we've got a little bit of time to uh, to kill here. Bear with me one second. <coughs> Ow. Ouch. <sighs> But yeah, clean 2-0. I mean, not that Shetty didn't fight for it, because boy howdy did Shetty fight for that. Like I said, that first match really could have gone either way. Both were down to like just one tap from going down, but Shetty just couldn't land it. And then bringing in the Twin Tail, do you think they did better with the Twin Tail? Or do you think they did better with the Ribbon Girl? I think the Twin Tail... Um was a little bit better, but that might have also just been Shady getting a little bit more used to the matchup mm. over time, but not adapting enough. Yeah, but like I said, it is still early days. This is a double elimination tournament, so Shady could still fight their way back in the top three from down there, but obviously the underground bracket is not where you want to be in the early stages because it just puts a little bit of extra pressure on you. So it does mean we have one of our participants ready for winner's semi-final. And obviously, if you can make it to winner's final, you're guaranteed top three no matter what happens. So it's that little bit more important, that little bit more spicy. And especially for Rafa, again, they've 
been it like they've actually surprisingly never finished third. They've either finished second or they finished first. But the last time they made it to a grand final was the twenty third cup. So we're talking twenty three cups ago. I think a that's while. Right. Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> it's it, it's it's been quite some time. So for Rafa to get back into top three would be really cool. But then to get back into grand finals, well, that would just be. That would just be wonderful, but uh, yeah, one of our former winners already in the underground bracket, but like I said, the second you get these kind of two people, and because Rafa is so inconsistent with signing up for Cups, the seedings can sometimes be all over the place, and oh no, we've got two former winners taking part in the first round. That's just how it goes. Uh, I believe let's... some other matches are starting to finish up. I think Replicant has just taken it over Yoshi and Junior has taken it over Akram. Yeah. So we will be seeing Replicant and Rafa as I'm not sure if it's going to be our first because Rafa was just on stream, but a semi final match is going to be between Replicant and Rafa. And the second one is going to be between Junior and the winner of Yam and Kosala Felina. Yep. Interesting to note that all of those matches so far have been two nils. We haven't had a third match um, in our best of threes just yet. So um, whilst that doesn't really set the tone for the tournament, sometimes it can just be like that. Like the matches can be close, but the scoreboard will just say, oh, look, it's another two nil. Where sometimes it's not the case, as you saw just then with the Rafa Shetty match, because those matches were still very close. Um, but yeah, just waiting on Yam and Kozlina, and those two have a rivalry and a half. <laughs> they seem to always fight each other in these tournaments. Uh, it does mean we have underground bracket stuff to go through as well. Shady will be taking on Panfoot, and Yoshi will be taking on Walon. Uh, Nay will be taking on the loser of Yam, Kozlina. And the winner of that will take on Akrim. So Akrim already into the second round in the underground bracket. All right, sorry, I'll uh, I'll be right back in a minute. Oh, nope. you be, I'll be. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that's not a problem. Um, but whilst we have a moment to breathe, hopefully everyone is doing okay. I'm just gonna give a quick shout out to those who are chilling in the chat. We got Yoshi in there, who's obviously fighting. Quite a lot of you sometimes are just chilling in the chat whilst everything's going on. So Yoshi, Rafa, good to see you. Rafa, obviously in there. You know, Rafa just chilling this time round. It's uh. Sometimes it's 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 nice to do that. Like you know, when you're consistently doing the competitive stuff every week, it's it's nice to just have a day where you just go, you know what? N not today. Let's let's just let's just have a relaxed time and just you know have a bit of fun. Uh, Squillis, welcome to the stream. Hopefully you're doing okay. Uh, Neos, Zarvain, Zarvain. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Probably not. Uh, Nurse is on there as well. So good to see you here. But yeah, hopefully everyone is having themselves a royally good time. Uh, sun is shining where we are. Uh, doesn't look like there's much of a wind, so... It's not going to really cool me down whilst we're doing all of this, but there you go. It's fine. Um, if you are looking for more ARMS content, obviously we here at European ARMS, we run the Challenge Cup every two weeks. Uh, but there is a special event that will be happening this Thursday, if I remember correctly. Um, I do believe that's April 23rd. Yes, it is. April 23rd. Uh, there will be a randomizer match that will be being broadcast here. Uh, between Riffa, who is chilling in the chat, and Iceman, two very high-level European players. And they're going to be a, doing a first to ten, so essentially how it works. That's right. They all randomize. Ah, oh, you're back. Welcome back, Penzo. And yeah, yeah De they will... definitely turn into that because <laughs> um, not o not only are Iceman and Rifa uh, two very good players, but they also just play s so many different characters at a high level. So if anyone can do good in a randomizer FT10, it will be them. And then we have our first semi-final match. Yeah, there we go. Replicon and Rafa are both in there. And we're going to see if they've started their bands yet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think they're just going to be in the process of doing their bands now. So yeah, 
first of our semi-finals is getting ready to go as we speak. So Rafa, who we just saw win 2-0 against Shetty, they will be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Replicant. Now we've already seen Rafa take out someone with a couple more wins. Now they're going to have to see if they can take out the next fighter with a couple more wins through their belt. And Replicant, you know, last final was literally the last cup. <laughs> they like they came second in the last cup. So with both Grimwood and Riffer not taking part, Replicant is looking at this to hopefully win their third title. Um, but that does remain to be seen. Yeah, Replicant has been uh, doing very well lately too. I mean, not only with that um, with that sec place finish last time, but also Replicant got the best EU result um, in Save Arms just yesterday, third place. Yeah. With Askew and Griff in first and second, respectively. I mean. You know you're doing good when you're getting up to that kind of level and you're just full and strong, you're making some free, but Griff and Askew, they're, they're just... What can you say about those two that we haven't already said? <laughs> but still doing an amazing job to get that far, so... Well, credit where it's credit's due, maybe they can take that momentum and uh, translate that into this cup. And there's our game one, and it's going to be on Mausoleum. Rafa, being the Cobra player, wanting to play aggressively and without those pillars in the way. Replicant, wa definitely wanting to keep some more distance, so avoiding those stages with a lot of corners. So Mausoleum is the perfect compromise between those two yeah. playstyles. And the best part is, especially with Mausoleum, obviously we got the trampoline that doesn't always come out straight away, and it's going to be a Lola mirror match. Uh, probably will not be a straight up mirror match, because they'll probably have different arms, as you can see. Replicant has the Hydra on the right, and uh, yeah, Rafa's not going to bring double a single Lola. one of them. Yeah, going to double Lola, so no Cobras just yet, as we start our first match. Yeah, for Lola, this is definitely, I think, Rafa's second best champion. Oddly, I mean, uh, fighter. <laughs> champion. <laughs> I, it, it's, it's Rafa disease. Rafa watches LAC while doing these. Um... <laughs> Well, Rafa's, Rafa's gonna get a good grab to set things going. Both are just gonna... You're gonna see a lot of bouncing. You're gonna see a lot of inflatable shields are just waddling around because that's exactly what these two characters are known to do. Yeah, just both going to try to get those freezes with those cool rings. Rafa gets the rush first and will catch Replicant with that long-range popper. Yeah, Replicant on the cusp of Critical Rafa with a pretty solid health lead here. Gonna get caught out by the book, by the Cooler Rank. Gonna shield off the rest of them, and Rep is gonna fire the rush. Close the distance nicely, 345. This is gonna be a very close finish to this as Rafa is the first one to poke on through. Finally, the Popper is a quick enough arm to poke through the grab, so no dice on that occasion, but this is incredibly close with 30 seconds to go. Yeah, both players are in grab range. Rafa gets a nice poke in. Yeah, you, you never, never, never take for granted what that popper is is gonna do because it's such a quick. Oh, that, arm. Was a, that was a nice one too from Rafa. Oh, but Rafa just definitely <laughs> doesn't want to take take a risk here. Just catches in that rush and takes the win. Yeah. Now Rafa switching over to um, the ice dragon here. Yeah. Papa Ice Dragon, very interesting combination. Obviously, one excels at long range, the other also pretty good at long range, considering the, for how quick the Papa is anyway. So, Papa trying to bounce on that, where if the Dragon can't quite connect, the Papa will likely catch Replicant if they go the right way. This is going to be a rush, though, because once again, they close the gap. 370 this time around. And uh, Rafa's got a fair bit of work to do here. Yeah, Rafa is actually weirdly appro approaching a lot here, but it is working. Um, <laughs> sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when you play a bit more aggressively with rep with arms that you your opponent just really wouldn't consider you doing so, it could just sort of throw you off for a moment. It's like, are you sure you want to do this? This is this is. <laughs> but uh, so far, Replicant has Rafa's number this time around, able to completely dodge out that previous rush attempt. 
Now Rafa on the back foot here. Now Replicant has almost finished charging up that rush, and Rafa is almost in rush range. There goes Replicant with the rush. It's going to fully connect for 370. That's... One more hit will finish Rafa off there. Yeah, Rafa's got a ways back into this. Finally takes re takes Replicant down past the halfway mark, but a uh, little too close to comfort there. And uh, all Replicant needed was just that uh, one little poke. And that's exactly what they got. Rafa will start with the slight advantage knowing that they will have Rush available first. And they're going to bring in the Birchuk. Yeah, <laughs> wisely putting away the dragon. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know Rafa did switch to playing Lola Pop as a secondary after 2.50. Got a lot of success playing uh, Lola with that Biffler Ice Dragon combo. But Rafa switching the Ice Arm to that Birchuk and switching the Light Arm to the Popper. Just fitting his own playstyle a lot better yeah. here. You notice how most of the times when the popper goes out, the bird truck is not too far behind, or vice versa. Like if the bird truck is trying to get Rep to move and the popper just comes out, it's crucial that Rep does not get caught out by it. Gonna land the rush though at least. Yeah, that was a nice rush to punish the grab attempt from Rafa. Now Rafa's got the rush back and could equalize the health here. Does get a nice popper hit in. Oh, shield pressure. This will be a break if they can land. But never mind. Replica doesn't even get the shield up. 190. Yeah, not getting the full damage there, but getting rep just as rep unshields and jumps back. This is going to be a very close and nervy end here. Again, arm pressure is up. Left, uh, weak on the left hand side. Both into critical. It's crucial that Rafa doesn't take too many pokes here. But Rep also has Rush available, so uh, this is gonna be... Yep, there it is, that'll be the KO! Rep jumps in on the popper extension and gets that glove rush to finish off game number one. Yep, Replicant coming back from a point down there to win that one, one, uh, two, one even. Leads the set one point to nil, but uh, you feel like Rafa sometimes got a little bit over ambitious. It's like, we'll just keep throwing out the popper. It's like, that's all well and good, but... You're in KO range and Rep has Rush ready. If the it, it feels like over committing just because you have a quick arm isn't always a good thing. Definitely. I, I wonder how uh, Rafa is going to approach this situation now. Whether we're going to see that switch back to the Cobra or staying with the Lola. Or actually, I think Rafa also has a very nice uh, spring man in the back pocket. We'll see if any of those decide to come up. Um, Replicant doesn't want any more dittos, and Rafa it, thankfully agrees we're going to go for the Cobra. <laughs> and we're going to go back to Mausoleum 2. And now we see the, the play style that Rafa's more known for with that Megaton. Not going to bring it out for a game number one, though. No, I'm going to stick with that popper and stick with that... Nope, there I was going to say sticks there's... with the burr, but nope, there's the Watt. <laughs> Yeah, this is not the best matchup to break Watt into with a light arm and a curve, but we're go but Rafa is Rafa's gonna make this work. <laughs> I mean, this, if anyone can make it work, it's Rafa. And even if the uh, trampoline comes out, Cobra won't mind it as much because you know Cobra slides around all over the place anyway. It's like pretty much gives them that little bit of airtime. But then again, same for Lola, and that was just that was just cruel. Just straight up in Lola's face, Mega Watt charge and two grabs in a row. Yeah, Rafa not messing around anymore. <laughs> yeah, the, the uh, big, big curving arm, large hitbox light arm, that just doesn't matter if a giant megawatt is right in the, her face. And there's another nice uh, pop head to finish things off there. Yeah. I mean, if you think about it, a megawatt is just a giant snowball, isn't it? <laughs> And with that, we're going to move on to point number two. Both with Rush already available. We're going to see Roaster and that cooler rank. See if they can get around this time around. Rush is going to come out from both. And this is a beautiful juggle from Rafa. Uh, gets 180. Yeah. Gets a little cheeky 20 at the end of that, which is what adds it up. And another grab. <laughs> it's like Rafa is not afraid to go for these grabs. Yeah, Rafa... Just at home in that close range. Just the problem is getting there against Lola. And there's another grab. That's going to be so much damage sending Replicant to the Magic Pixel and one more popper poke. Damn, that was a completely different game here. Yeah, that wasn't even to game three. Yeah, that wasn't even close. That that really wasn't even close. 
that, that rush exchange was just unfortunate. Replicant bounced up, went for it, and Rafa went, I have what? I'm a punch through you if you don't mind. <laughs> That was just a completely different showing. There, here we see Rafa going aggressively on a fighter that can just jump in your face, unlike Lola with the ice, ice dragon there. Yeah, but yeah, it's almost like Lola just, it's almost like there was just no answer for that. It was just like, it's like, okay, cool, you got the megawatt and the popper. You got one of the slowest but heaviest arms in the game with one of the quicker arms in the game. So it's like, if the watt, if the watt is punching through everything and the coolerang doesn't make it to you in time, you're gonna get hit, shocked, and grabbed in very quick succession. And you just saw the second Rafa knew everything was in their momentum. It was just like, oh, I'm a grab. <laughs> I'm not afraid to grab you. I could do this. Because you're so scared about me flinging out Popper and what? <laughs> well, if uh, there's anything that's going for a uh, Replicant here, it's going to be that counter pick for game number three. And as I said before, Cobra Movement not the best on Scrapyard. And there it is, Scrapyard for game three. Yeah. So, ironically enough, this will be our first match three of the tournament, of the uh, stream anyway. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And yeah, Replicant just going to keep uh, staying on the Lola same set here. Actually, no, switching out the Burchuk for. Um, no, still has I mean, Burchuk. Switching out the Cool Rank for a Burchuk. <laughs> they, they... The players on top of Burchuk. Yeah. Oh no. So it's not a uh, it's not a character ditto. It's an arms ditto. <laughs> both with the popper, both with the burr, and Lola already taking the high ground. Are we surprised? Yeah, but. With Replicant taking the high ground and uh, going uh, back defensively a lot, staying in the shield, Rafa is just continuously going for the 1-2s and building up Rush a lot faster here. But Replicant gets a nice charge pop for both here, sending Rafa back. But Rafa is going to charge up that Rush a lot faster. Yeah, Rafa should get the... Well, actually, no, they're both going to get at the exact same time now, so who's going to blink first? It's going to be Rap. Does actually manage to get there in the end. I thought they just missed it, but no. 275. Nicely done for Rep. So now, what is the response from Rafa? Immediately trying to back Replicant into a corner. Might be able to make this rush a little bit easier to land, and does so. And actually exceeds it. Goes all the way up to 320. Much better rush from Rafa there. There's the rush off the popper extension. Rafa getting another nice popper poke off of Replicant's shield dash. There's a, the ice from Replicant, though. Oh, couldn't take advantage of it, and it's gonna, but it's finally gonna find Rafa onto the floor, both on very near same health. I think Rafa has a lead by, well, no longer has a lead, never mind. <laughs> yeah, it just keeps going back and forth. Replicant has a rush now, though. Replicant Let's could. See if Replicant can use this pocket. Yeah, I was gonna say, Replicant could do to Rafa what they did to them, and oh, this is brutal! Shield is going to be chip damage and nothing more. Actually does catch right at the end. I think Rafa should have lead here. Two seconds to go. They just need to not get hit. And <laughs> How cheekily close do you want to have it? Both were a punch away. Rafa had to just backtrack. Instead, they just went, you know, what? I'm just going to try and hit you, actually. Why not? And get the KO on zero seconds. They're going to bring out the Megawatt now. <laughs> Let's see if this... Change does makes things a bit different. This is going to be a lot better against uh, and blocking the bird check, but it is still going to be very slow and counterable by those uh, replicant side dashes there. Yeah, replicant hopefully will have a much more of a say on how on uh, how to deal with the what this time around. Having said that, they don't really have a curved two, so they're just going to have to hope that the popper can at least land before anything the else can happen. Really doing work. Oh, big but time damage. A nice rush from Rafa. 335 just got the shield up in time. Last thing you want to do is get shocked by a megawatt. The popper is just being brutal. It's like Rev's got a popper of their own, but it's just not firing in as much as they'd like to. So let's manage to score with 270 on their rush and somewhat evens the field. Rafa does still have the health lead though, just slightly. <laughs> no. Oh, but there's the chip on the me megawatt. Sending the hopefully back into Replicant's favor. Rafa tries to jump in a little bit too hastily there. Yeah, it's like, it's like g gladly giving up the high ground. I think they were trying to just flat out surprise Replicant for how quickly they were coming in, but not this time around. Both in now critical. Rafa's just on the full approach, 
has the rush ready. Gonna commit to it. Go for it. But that's a bit too far away. It'll add Replicant to shield. 20 seconds left on the clock, and Replicant is gonna commit to the rush. Does not want to lose this point, and does make sure we take this to point number three. Still, this could Smart go. Decision. You never know what's going to happen yeah, this... with uh, Rafa in that close range. It can swing so fast. And Rafa thinking about switching, but now going to stick with the Popper Watt. Replicant going to stick with the Popper Birchuk. So Rafa's going to try and make this combination work. But Replicant, like I said, just about got away with it. Gets one freeze. What's they going to do? What? Their decision was trying to go for the grab, but the Watt's always going to punch through. <laughs> Oh, there's a nice uh, jump over the Megawatt into a Popper Poke yep. from Replicant there. Yep, Birchuk. <laughs> no. I'm just finding new ways uh, to you, like, constantly mixing up ways to dodge around that giant Megawatt hitbox. There's another nice Popper, and Replicant takes a fairly nice health leap, sending Rafa to a quarter. Yep, Rafa is within KO, KO range here. If Rafa can get a solid read here, or a little bit of a juggle, they can easily end this match. Rafa needs to try and find some way back into this. Here comes the rush, and wait, what in, what in the world just happened there? So neither of them got anything from that. If anything, Replicant is just looking for one more poke. That did not go Rafa's way at all. Arm goes down, one more poke. There's the popper. Jeez. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that rush earlier was on... Uh, Rafa's popper side, so the damage did go through a lot, but the camera, some something was off. Yeah, I was gonna say, I honestly thought that Rafa had, I thought Rafa had, had the rush there. Like, they managed to get to the side, flung in with the Watt first, and then the Watt somehow didn't make it. It's like, how did that not make it? It's, it surely should have gone through, but... There you go, sometimes that's just how it goes, and with that, Replicant is going to take a 2-1, very, very close semi-final, and book their ticket into top three, no matter what happens. Now, we are going to be seeing uh, the uh, the other semi-final, um, and it's also there's also going to be another Cobra with Junior, and I'd say another Lola, but... Uh, it, it was probably going to be a twin tell from Kosalina in a match like this. Yeah, you'd probably expect to see that. Uh, we can also have some uh, little bit of updates whilst we wait for Kosalina to jump in from the underground bracket. Uh, Panther is out and so too is Yoshi. Yoshi uh, being beaten 2-0 by Wallon and Panther being beaten 2-0 by Shetty, which means it will be Shetty Wallon in underground round two. So that will be, we'll keep you up to date what's going on down there. Uh, Yam and Nea are taking part in their underground match as we speak. The winner of that will face Okrim. The winner of that will face Rafa. So, back to where we are. Uh, oh. Oh, right. Okay, they're going to go to Mausoleum. Right, okay, got it. Okay. I got very confused on how that was worded. The way it was worded sounded like they'd already started fighting. Uh, but no, we are we are getting started with our second semi-final. Kid Cobra on the left, Twintel on the right. Oh, this is this is an interesting change up from Kosalina here. We usually see her with those chillas and uh, the Thunderbirds, but this is actually a maid and a phoenix just switching around the elements. But I mean, the phoenix is going to help them massively just because. Hello, Junior has a guardian. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, you really need a cur curved arm against there. Nate not having, uh, Nate having a fa fairly nice curve itself. Yeah, um, yeah. Your your hope is to either have the nade land before the guardian can come out, or the phoenix to can get round. But having said that, Junior has a counter for that as well. They've got the shack ram, uh, not the shack ram, the ram ram. My my bad. Uh, and so far, neither of them really want to hit each other. Junior finally just get poked through, but quickly fight, fires back with a, uh, a little tap from the Guardian. Yeah, nice, nice reflexes on Kosalina there to punish that um, first grab, but now Junior is just getting up close and staying there. And, I mean, I said it before and I say it again, and I'll, I'll sound like a broken record doing it, center stage control. But now Trampoline is up, and that means there is no center stage anymore. 
Yep. Oh, nice grab from Coselina yeah. on Junior's landing. Yeah, Coselina very much predicted Junior was going to come straight up and got the grab up just in the nick of time. Both of rush available, but Coselina crucially cannot take any more hits. Junior still hanging above the halfway mark, so it's still a comeback and a half required from Coselina to take this wave, but does land the Phoenix. Yeah, and there's another nice Ram Ram coming around the outside. Junior can just afford to stay back on the other side of the trampoline now. Kosalini needs to approach. He gets a nice cross stage grab there and would finish things off. Oh the line, no. And just stays in shield. Yeah, I had a feeling Junior would do that. It's like you, you saw that scenario and Junior was just like, if I hold shield up, you can't you can't get it from here. And Kosalini was hoping that Junior would move. But again, why would you move when you know even a grab will keep the match in your favor? And starts off with a big 380 rush, and Junior is just, yo, yeah, wow, that's, that's just brutal. <laughs> yeah, the charged Guardian right in the face into uh, into the grab there. That's just a lot of damage from Junior's side. This is why that this combo works so well. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> Junior's immediately just gone that distance, it's like, it's absolutely fine to fight from here. It's like, if Junior plays aggressive, it's absolutely brutal. But they know they've got the lead. They know it's Kozlina who has to do all of the work here. And they're just biding their time. Just letting Kozlina come into mistake after mistake here. And that's going to be... Trying to approach here, but oh. gets caught with another grab. Yeah, back onto the trampoline. And it's giving Junior something to work with. Rush is going to come out. Fires in with 380. Tips Junior into the halfway mark. But Kozlina... Is gonna go down to the ram, I do believe. Or was that self destruct? I think it was self destruct actually. I think it was both. Um, <laughs> both. <laughs> both is good. But yeah, just one more curving arm around the side will secure that. Scrapyard and Temple Band from Junior's side, just those stages with a few more inclines that are easier for Quintel to move around compared to Copra. And let's see what Kosalina picks. I mean, if you're if you're Kozalina, do you stick with the twin tail? Ooh. I think you do at this point. Twin tail's skill set is fairly um, okay at dealing with this style. Oh, but there is going to be the Lola Pop switch. Lola Pop going into sparring ring. So what is the arm call going to be here? Nade, Tribolt, and the hottest of slaps. Those um, are going to be fairly good at getting around the. Um, shield arm, but they are also fairly nicely blockable with that ram ram. So, but but right now we are just going to be seeing um, the tribal and the nade. I know exactly what Kozlina's plan is going to be here, using Lola Pop's wonderful bouncy shenanigans. Just get into the high, get into the high point, and then flinging the bolt in because if you can get the stun whilst Junior's on the ground, Junior has nowhere to go, and that's going to be a quick grab confirmed. But Junior is going to make sure that Cousinly does not get a chance to do that, let alone breathe in this match as they're just pinning her in that corner. That's right. Um, well, another thing that Lola Pop's uh, skill set is good at is she, she can just move around during that shield, so she can just slowly inch towards the extended shield and knock that out of the air, then counter-attack. Oh, Junior's crab just about missing that. In millimeters, if that. Both of Rush available, but Junior's probably not going to want to use that at any point right now because they know they can just get one more poke and they'll likely take this point away. But Kosselin is not... Kosselin is definitely not done here. The bolts are finding their way through and obviously as a mobile, as a quite mobile character to, to Kid Cobra is, the bolts are never great. <laughs> There's the whiff rush from Junior, which could turn things around, but no, a nice charge Ram Ram is going to catch Kosalina on the approach. So Kosalina is actually going to stick with that. So they, they believe that they can definitely make this work, and Junior not expecting the rush to come out straight away. 290, good start for Kosalina. Yeah, that is going to catch that extended Ram Ram early on. But now we are going to go back to to neutral, back to where we were. Junior is taking the center stage again. Kosalina is on the retreat, just trying to inch around and gets a nice tribal poke around the shield. Yep. And every single time you just see Kosalina just, uh, just waddle on, on 
in there, especially with the shield up, but is getting caught up by her own self-destructs, I feel like, as well, and on the cusp of critical, armor's gonna be broken. Junior knows they have KO opportunity right here, goes for it, hits it, lands it. On the extended tribal there. Yep, and with that, it's gonna be a quick 2-0 for Junior there, despite Kozlina's best attempt. And it is gonna be Junior to take on Reptican in winner's final. There we go, two of UK's finest there in the finale. I mean, in the winner's side finals, yeah. of course, not the grand finale. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was gonna say, I was gonna say, get it. upset from the loser's bracket. Yeah, get it, get a little too ahead of yourself there, Pento. <laughs> but that's fine, that's, that's just the nature of arms for you. So, it does mean winner's final will be coming up. It will be between Junior and it will be between Rattican. And as a reminder, this set is going to be best of five, so it'll be a bit longer than the ones we saw before. Especially since the ones we saw before were mostly 2-0s, besides Rep versus Rafa. Yeah, there has been another 2-1. Uh, um, yeah, I'll be pleased to know. In the underground bracket, uh, we've had our second, no, our third 2-1 of the day. Uh, we had Yam and Kozlina go 2-1, Kozlina win that 2-1. We had Rep versus Rafa. We're doing a 2-1. Yam beat Nea uh, by two points to one. So Yam going through. And Akrim, I don't know if Akrim has had to give up or forfeit for whatever reason, but we're going to minus one on the challenge, which means Yam has gotten a bye into underground round three. So they will take on Rafa. Meanwhile, on the other side of that bracket, Shetty beat Wall on 2-0. And they will now be going up against Kosalina. Yeah, both, both players taking a, a minute here to prepare for this game, first of all. Uh, but it looks like Replicant is starting to uh, ready back up. Definitely wanting to ban sparring against <laughs> an aggressive player like Junior here. Yeah, I was gonna say, we, 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 everybody has seen what Junior is up to, like with the Kid Cobra. We know how this Junior, well, you know how this Cobra plays. It's aggressive, not gonna be afraid to be in your face. Keeps the center stage. You don't want a boxed-in stage like sparring ring. You just don't. And whilst we wait for these two to decide, it, like I said, it is going to be fun to note that uh, Junior will be making a top three appearance for the first time since the 31st Cup. It would be quite amazing if they can book their ticket into Grand Final just straight up immediately. Uh, but they've got to take out Replicant, who, like we said, came second last time round. They're looking for their third ever win. Junior, I am, shockingly enough, is still looking to win this for the first time. So, if they and could... surprising no one, Junior bans Temple and DNA. <laughs> and Replicant goes to Mausoleum, the classic. Yeah. But will Junior throw another curveball into this? <laughs> That's the question. I think the only thing he's going to throw is a curve arm. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Thank you very much. Setting up the joke and you knock it over. It's going to be... Oh, but actually that is a curve ball. Oh, damn it, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> never mind. So, Junior on the left with the Cobra, Shark Horror Disbelief, and Replicant on the right with Lola Pop. Again, nobody is surprised. Phoenix Hydra... I did explain. Uh, sorry. No, it's okay. Uh, Phoenix Hydra, immediately gonna start off with the grab, going up against that toaster and the slap. Yeah, we did explain in the last match that there are more movement options that Lola Pop can use to go get around that guardian, like just, uh, slowly, uh, wobbling to it in shield. So, Junior might just be skipping all that and just skipping the guardian entirely. We do know Junior plays fairly well with the gloves though, but Replicant does have the upper hand here in the first match, just getting a lot of those Hydra pokes in over and over again. Yeah, I was gonna say, it's a really... It another nice grab to finish things off. Gosh. Yeah, the rush was just... Whoa. The rush was perfect, like the Phoenix, you just, you just saw the Phoenix swoop around, landed, landed the mark where it needed to, and then the rest was just juggling the rush up and finishing with the grab, so Replicant off to a great start. Junior gonna stick with that toast. And uh, stick with the slam as well. Uh, there's finally fire one on in, but uh, if if the uh, Cobra doesn't like the tribolts, they're not gonna like the Hydra even more because again, 
Junior trying to go in for that jump glove rush, but that is a little bit too far away. It is going to swing things heavily into Replicant's favor if Replicant can get this next rush. Yeah, Rep already with it ready. They're just waiting for a spot where Junior is just not in the right position, but then again, they're just walling this, just, just keeping that center stage. And again, the Phoenix doing what it does best, swooping around, catching Junior. Shockley stayed on their feet, so uh, no additional knockback on that. Let's yeah, Replicant it. missing the initial rush, but that Phoenix is just so good at catching those side dashes. Junior has the rush now, though, is trying to approach to make things happen, but Replicant is doing a nice job getting Junior away here. Yeah. Amusingly enough, Replicant isn't too far away from the KO range, and the rush is going to land 355, and Replicant... That's big damage. <sighs> Just one more poke and Junior will be right back in this match. Can the slap connect? Not quite, just about missing. It's really just down to who's going to hit first and it's going to be the toaster that punches on through. We're going to see ourselves Cat on point three. Catching Replicant off guard there on the charge. Now Junior is going to switch things up for game three and is going to go for the tri-blast. He's going to try and catch Replicant as they de-shield hopefully. And uh, so far, off to a much better start. Unfortunately, the Triplast does carry that self-destruct tendency, and we do see it come into play, and another successful rush from Replicant, 365. Yeah, catching Junior on the charge up there. Now, Junior has to approach, almost having that rush ready. There's another nice combo from Replicant. And these aren't just like normal chip 1-2 hits, these are like full-on charged combo hits. So it's like Junior has to really play very carefully if they don't want to get roasted too much. Oh! No, no. There's the confirm! What a juggle! Beautiful juggle with the Triblast, committed to it, they were close enough. Now they just need one more poke and they'll turn this right on its head. Replicant Duncan has the rush though. Yeah. This... There, it, there it goes, on the... <laughs> oh they missed oh, it! No. They missed the last the hit! Hydra missed it, and the ball will take it away right at the death. Oh, if the Hydra had hit, that would have done it. And Rep will be kicking something hard. You just know it. It's, it's just the way it goes sometimes. Junior will lead the set by a point to nil. That was a very well um, executed rush confirmed by Junior, though, to to set that up. Because... Because... Oh. The, the rush uh, with uh, um, the explosive arm is very difficult to confirm. You have to get up close and shoot shoot the tri -blast then because it kind of aims downwards and sends your opponents flying up. Whereas if you just punch while standing, it just knocks your opponent down. It's definitely not an easy rush to get, so very well played from Junior there. This could be one of those sets, couldn't it? Where it's gonna it, be... It, it, is going, it is already one of those sets. <laughs> this is how the first match was. Yeah, so like, if this is how the first match is, I hope you're ready for another four matches of these, because if this doesn't go all the way to a, to a fifth match, I don't know what will. <laughs> and it looks like we're gonna go to DNA Lab for our second match. And what are we going to see here? Oh, well, neither are gonna, really going to switch, but are they going to switch arms? That's the question. That's right. Replicant does have multiple um, lower pop loadouts. Is going to... I don't know if we saw that Birchuk uh, in that last game, but Junior is going to switch back to the tried and true standard Ram Ram Guardian. Trying to go for that extra little shield, and obviously Replicant does have the Phoenix to curve around that as well, and obviously there's... The wonderful ability that Rep that uh, Lola does have. If they can get high enough, the Hydra will probably just go straight on through. But uh, so far, it's uh, even Steamers at the moment. Although Junior is just forcing the clown in the corner. And, yeah, that uh, was a nice shield cancel into a grab there, just to get that 175 damage onto Replicant. Yeah, it's just that extra... Replicant just on the defensive here, tra having to run away. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> so Replicant ran away. <laughs> Um, but it does have the Phoenix to still fire on around these tubes, and it's going to get a good grab of their own. And the tubes are once again going to just fall down. Replicant does have rush. This, I guess would you would you want to use the rush on the first point, or do you want to hold on to it? I say use it. Just 
Oh, Replica tries to go for it <laughs> on the extended shield, but no. Is, Junior is able to dodge that and gets another nice grab. Junior turned things around so fast, and now Replica is in rush range. Is That'll be a shield sure break. Though, that's gonna break. Yeah, doesn't get the KO they're looking for. One more punch. It was actually really gutsy for Junior to leave the Guardian out. Somehow managed to not go down to the rush, and the Guardian just slivered on in and just stopped the rest of it. And with that, that is going to be a point on the board again for Junior. Replicant trying to send a poke around that shield, but Junior is just going to reactivate that and secure game number one. Replicant staying with the set for round two. Just if it works, don't... Uh, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I knew what you were going for. There we go. <laughs> yeah, there, there we go. And, yep, another... this, and this set has been very good at catching Junior on the approach, but not very good at getting Junior away once Junior is that close. There's the rush. It's going to hit yeah, on that... the second uh, barrage. Yeah, this time around, Junior didn't have a tube to work with this time around, and the Guardian was not going to help them retract quick enough, so Junior had to take all of that in the end. Those get a grab, caught Lola just before they hit the floor. And so very much still in this and actually going to come straight on through with that rush. Caught Replicant at the right time, arm had already fully extended out. And uh, advantage back into Junior would you say? Almost, both players are at fairly equal amounts of health. Replicant gets another nice, nice poke here. But now Replicant has, the most important thing here for Replicant is Replicant has distance. That is going to be super important here. Getting around that shield. Junior is just trying to find a way to approach. But now Replicant has the rush back. So they could choose to end it right here, right now, and does so. Guardian was definitely out, and Replicant knew that they could not miss from there. And that's going to tie this up once again. Very well played around uh, that set, sh showing that that arm combination was not, in fact, what was costing game number one, but now we'll have to see how these players are going to maneuver without any tubes out for round number three. Yep, and the Guardian, the... oh no, the Guardian just, it got deployed and was right in Rep's face, and before they knew it, they got a shock, nasty shock. There's a rush from Junior, but Replicant shielded almost all that, trying to punish it, but did not get the punish. Yeah, couldn't quite get oh, that there's time. there's another grab. Another big grab from Junior and Replicant, well... Oh, you've got to scale Mount Everest right now if you want to get anywhere close to taking this point away. Oh, there's another cancel. Oh my and word. Replicant is on the magic pixel by Junior, was barely hit at all. Yeah, that was wow. a... Can we say that was a near perfect there for, uh, for Junior? Because that was just... that was brutal. I mean, these are just Cobra things. Sometimes the match will be super close, and sometimes the snowball is nigh unstoppable there. And it just keeps going and going when Cobra gets up close. So, yeah. But let's see if Replicant can turn things around and get the reverse sweep. <sighs> we are going to Mausoleum but again. An interesting choice here for Replicant. Obviously, they've got some form for plan, but... Uh... Oh, this would be uh, this would be quite the uh, this would be quite the turnaround here if Junior does make it in. Junior just needs to win one more point, and for the first time in quite a long, long time, they'll be in the grand final of the Challenge Cup. So it's... this is the mausoleum game, but uh, Junior is staying with the um, Guardian here as opposed to Game One, where Junior did switch to the more medium arm focused set. Notice how Replicant's bringing in the Coolerang with this Hydra this time round, and not the uh, not the rat, not the Phoenix even. Oh, that's a nice counter wrap from Replicant there. Yeah, good time grabs, exactly what they needed. Gives them very much alive in this match in the early goings. You see, Julia, every single time they slide on forward, the Guardian is one of the first things they deploy just to see if they can catch Replicant out. But so far, the Hydra and the Coolerang's doing their job, poking through when they need to. Yeah, the Coolerang is poking. Um a lot better than the Phoenix, I'd say, almost, because it has that little bit of a smaller hitbox at the trade-off of only being able to go left or right, not above. Mm -hmm. And the Hydra is still getting poked through. Granted, they're not charged, but every single poke that goes through, the pressure is coming up. Arm weak on the right-hand side for Junior. 
Most likely they did want to try and go for a shield break, but they're gonna let it fade away. And they bide their time. The replicant a lot more patient here. Junior does go in for the rush at close, but it goes straight into the shield. Now replicant is at the rush advantage and is going to try to find an opportunity. No! Gets it off! Oh no! You have got to be. To cancel the shield, but that was a little bit too far away. And just like that, Junior has tipped this completely on its head. Replicant on the cusp of half health. Junior with a sliver of a lead as we enter the yeah. final five seconds. Gets caught by the Hydra what? and the Coolerang. Three seconds ago, Junior has to get something. A grab will do it. A grab does it. I don't believe that. Wow, that, that last second grab is going to get the timeout victory. <laughs> oh my goodness me. Junior is a point away from winning that. Replicant naturally not pleased with that entire thing at all. But my word! Yeah, Replicant did a very good job in the first half of that time. Staying patient and playing a really nice turtle style, but Junior just completely turned things on its head. And a grab is gonna set the motion for things again. Both are gonna have Rush relatively at the same time, and that trampoline is another poke from getting revealed to the set. Junior will commit to Rush first and lands it. 355. Let's see if Replicant can turn things around with the rush ready. <sighs> Tries to get something off of Junior's whip. Grab. There's the extended shield. So scary. And there it goes. Oh, the, the ram. ram. The ram came through at the right moment. Clutches Replicant off guard. Nice. There's the grab. Ah. Uh, Keeps that. This is going to be so difficult. Oh, Rep does get the ice and is going to convert that into a grab. Oh Rep my. It almost has the health back. But crucially, Junior will get the rush charged up first if Replicant cannot take advantage. 30 seconds left on the clock. The Guardian is out. But the Hydra just can't land. It's just not close enough. That's true. Replicant does have to approach and approach fast. There's a nice cool rank. Oh. Junior goes for the. Jump rush and is going to get the, the Ram Rams so such a fast rush and it is going to connect and give Junior the 3 0. Yep, it gives Junior the 3 0 and crucially for the first time since the 27th Cup, Junior is gonna make it to Grand Finals. That's My right. word, I. Can we? I, I feel like there's a lot of talking points in that set, but I feel like the unfortunate talking point has to be the literal last second grab save from Junior because my goodness, how did that cut? I, I didn't even notice until um, 10 seconds were left on the clock that the timeout was happening. Oh my gosh. It, to be fair, a lot of people do that. Like when you're when you're taking part in any kind of match, especially when you're in ranked as well, you just you're so focused on trying to get the damage or try to sort of like buff out attacks that you don't realize the 10 second mark is rapidly approaching until it goes red. It's like ah crap. But uh my word, that was <laughs> How close do you want your matches? <laughs> Cause... I, I mean like we said before, I'm the scores aren't doing the game's ju no, justice. No, because again, it's a 3 nil. <laughs> it didn't go to match 5, but it really felt like it should have. <laughs> um, I mean, that was not the only match. Just remember match 1 ending with those two rushes and both players on the Magic Pixel. That, that was a series. That really was, and wow. Junior could win their very first Challenge Cup, but we're going to have to wait and see how the rest of the tournament plays out. We can tell you in the underground bracket that we're not going to have one of our former winners taking any further part because Kozalina has knocked out Shetty with a 2-0 well, win, so Shetty is out! Okay, that's, that, that is huge. That is, that is absolutely huge. huge! Like, excuse me? Like... Shetty has won this cup twice. Kozalina has only made top three once and has never made grand finals. And she knocks out Shetty. <laughs> like, that's massive. Yeah, so she's going to be one of the players we're going to see uh, in, in the next match. We are um, going to be streaming the match uh, for... Uh, 
I think this is the underground semifinal where the winner moves on to the underground final and the loser gets fourth place. This is going yeah. to be between Kozalina and the other player is to be decided. Yep, yeah, it'll be decided Yen between... and Rafa are still playing yeah, their match out. Rafa and Yana are still playing and we saw how close Rafa came <laughs> as well. So it's, it's just anyone's... Again, it's again, this is anyone's match here because Rafa and Yam... Yam has never won this cup before. Rafa has, but it's but that win was like the second ever cup, so you get the general idea. Yam has some form of consistency on their side. Last top three was three cups ago, and their last grand final was an additional four cups back, and it is going to be Rafa. Rafa has uh, bested Yam by the looks of it. Yeah, but by the sounds of it, it was not a steamroll either. This was a 2-1. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was waiting for the score to update, that's why I got so confused when Rafa joined, it's like, okay, so... Um, but yeah, a 2-1, so Yam giving it everything they had, but... I would have loved to have seen that set. Gosh, there's two sets in the underground bracket that I would have loved to have seen, because I would have loved to have seen how Kozlina beat Shetty, and how Rafa nearly lost to Yam, so... I mean, like we said, said all the way at the beginning, Rafa not being here... Grimwood not being here just made, made this wide open and there were so many uh, close matchups that could go either way. So whatever happens here, we've got a bit of a shock on our hands. Like, like we have a potential shock, whatever happens, because th this is going to be great. Because Kozalina will either make it to top three for the second time ever in the Challenge Cup, or Rafa, for the first time in a literal age, will make it to top three. It's really anyone's guess here. I would honestly be satisfied with any of these four yeah. uh, people winning here. Like, th th this is your but moment especially now. Especially these two. Especially yeah. these two. Like, every, I've called so many matches with Kozlina at every single time. She's just been on the cusp of getting there, and it's just got away from her, and it's like... This could be that moment, but at the same time, you've got Rafa, who just, like I said, their last grand final was the 23rd Cup. Their only win was the second. It's like, whoever gets through will have absolutely deserved it, and it's getting a bit more of a, getting a little bit of piece of history in the process, so. Oh, and we are going to be seeing a very familiar banning pattern with Rafa <laughs> removing the column stages. Kosalina removing the corner stages and ending up on Mausoleum as game number one. Well, whatever happens, it's going to be great. Kosalina is readied up. Mausoleum is getting a lot of screen time today, but I think we all kind of expected that. Kosalina is ready. Rafa just readying up now, and there we go. Rafa will be on the left with Cobra. Kosalina on the right with the Lollipop. And I thought uh, Kosalina would switch back to the Twintel here, but it does look like it's going to be the Lola. Rafa also, interestingly, not going for the more common heavy arm set, instead actually going for double mediums with the Roaster, with the Birdchuck. Yeah, so yeah, both are going to equip an unguided arm then. One Roaster for Rafa, one Nade for Kozalina. And they're going to hope that the Bolts can pick on through before the Birdchuck can do any damage. And uh, so far, it's Rafa starting up with the uh, more damage onto Kozla. Remember that this is the last best of three, so it'll be the first of two on this one. It's not the finals. Rafa starting up off the lead much more dominantly here, taking control of that center stage, and is actually catch Kozla on the attempted bounce block. Yeah. That is going to lead into a 270 damage rush. Yeah, and now Kozlina has to try to find a way back in here, but that is not going to happen. There's one more cooling ah, Birchuk poke yeah. to finish off that first round. Yeah, unfortunate for Kozlina. Going to come up with something a little bit different. Double the nades now, so going to go for all explosion. Pretty much go big or go home, essentially, is what we always like to say with a double explosive loadout. Rafa obviously not going to change anything, but it's finally going to get a face full of explosion. Now, Rafa usually playing a bit more aggressively here, but because it has the right oh! to get the confirm! Off the jump, made explosion. That is such a tricky confirm to get. This could be a perfect! This could be a perfect right here! It would be amazing if a Kozlina if they can land it. Oh, please land it! They do land it! It's a perfect! <laughs> wow. Just 
like that after the first round. We are going to be a perfect. Oh my goodness, new cast leader that came perfectly. Rafa is going to switch up big time. Going to bring in a hot slap for that now. But, but this time around, things are a little bit different because Kosalina is not starting off with the rush, so Rafa is a bit more secure, trying to go into that middle, middle stage. Will not get the rush to start things off, though. No, nope, Kosalina manages to block it all, but so far is being peppered by this roaster. The nades aren't quite landing as consistently as they'd have liked to in the previous point, so it's, it's slowly turning back into Rafa's advantage. Does finally catch the nade and sands Rafa down, but uh, Kazalina is looking for anything. Oh, Cobra slid beautifully to the side. And it's not, not getting that rush there to turn things around. Now, Rafa almost has the um, rush back. There it is. It is going to almost no. do the full damage there. Doesn't quite KO, so Kazalina's still in it. Just about gets away with the grab from Rafa, but it is going to fall foul to the roaster. And despite scoring the perfect, it will be Rafa who leads this set by a point to nil. <laughs> My goodness me. <laughs> but de definitely <laughs> not, not a... Definitely still a, a close game though as we see by that one yellow dot there. Uh, I mean, I mean... I, th I think it was Slacks or some. It was either Slacks or Malieve. It's one of the two. It was just like, all right, you scored a perfect. You win by default. It's like, no, nah, that's not how this quite works. But for Kozalina to get that perfect after how that first point went, it's just like, what? Why? Why did this come from? <laughs> and Rafa Green too. That brush confirmed being very beautiful. Oh yeah. Oh my word. And in either case, so we're gonna wait for the. Bands to come back up. Uh, I think I've both of them forgotten that they need to go back to the band, or they both just uh, cooling back down on what just happened there. Uh, yeah, bands are, yeah, <laughs> just waiting on those. I think to be fair, I think they both got caught by surprise with that. I was like, Rafa was just like, ah, oh, excuse me, what in the world was this? And Costin just like, I'll take it. <laughs> oh, I think, wow, Rafa must have banned very early for that. That was interesting. Okay, yeah, but yeah, Scrapyard is going to be. The pick from Kosalina, and oh, Rafa we... has announced the switch. Yeah, Rafa, we're going to be seeing Rafa's spring man now. Just to be just to be clear here, winner has to announce character switches. Winner does not have to announce arm switches. There you go. And the loser does not have to announce uh, anything. Anything. <laughs> anything. But yeah, Rafa not wanting to play. Uh, Cobra on a map like this, probably. And we are going to be seeing Rafa's default spring man here. So, Tribalt and Toaster will be going up against the Nade and the Triblast, so Kathleen is sticking with the explosive theme. Yeah, and, and if there's anything that's good against that, that spring man, it is definitely explosives because of that um, deflect that Rafa has. And already you could just see the explosion just just catching Rafa just out the corner of his eye there. <laughs> Never underestimate the explosion AoE because my gosh it could really hinder you. Got the stun with the tripod but was nowhere near close enough to take advantage of it. <laughs> yeah Rafa definitely wants to be a lot more close range here to be able to follow up on stuns. But Kosalina is doing a very good job keeping the distance and on uh, a map like Scrapyard if Rafa gets too close, Kosalina can just uh, go up that incline and get distance back that way. Yep. For 50 seconds. Oprah is having that rush now, though, trying to find the right moment to get those. Maybe Kosalina will do one of those confirms again. Yeah, I was gonna say, you're just looking at the health, and you're looking at how we haven't really had a hit for a while. No sooner have I said that, <laughs> Rafa lands a stun into a toast, which is exactly what they needed. 30 seconds left on the clock. Kosalina needs to take advantage here. Yeah, but instead of using that um, knockdown to try to get up close, Rafa just resets back to a bit more distance because Kosalina needs to approach now. Gets another nice charged toaster hit in there. Gets another poke in with the bolt, so it's still very close here. Now, what will be the decision here for Rafa with six seconds to go? They need to somehow hold on to this, and Kosalina is backing all the way up. Actually oh. connects with the rush! Crucial there for Kosalina, and will secure them the point. 
Yeah, Rafa tried to dodge to the side there and get a counter rush or, or something, but that was too slow. Kozalina was just up too close there for Rafa's counter attempt yep. to work. Yep. Rafa. But now Rafa is starting off round two with the rush ready and is going to go up close to try to find a pop find an opportunity to use that. Yeah, and you can see Kuzlin just immediately getting the distance from them because they know that, that that's exactly what Rafa is going to come in with. Rush does come out, just about caught them. I thought they just about missed it, but not quite. Nails in with 210. Kuzlina is just on the cusp of the halfway mark, but still very much in this fight. Kuzlina getting distance back here, just trying to keep Rafa away so none of those one-twos like that one just now are going to work actually approaching a little bit more now that the rush is ready yeah arm weak on the right hand side could very much force a shield break but Kostlina also on the cusp of going down here right into the critical and Rafa should have rushed in just a moment missing with the grab there it is Rafa jumping in close but not oh there that was a self-destruct yeah the, the tribal the charge tribal damage hit and then the charge tribal Blast self detonated for 50 damage, and sometimes that's just all you need. <laughs> it's all, all you need, indeed. We're gonna see a switch from Coslino. We've got the hot slap coming in now alongside that nade, so no more tri blast. Rafa, not gonna change anything now. Who will bite here first? Both with rush. It's gonna be Coslino who lands first. 200. Wow, 370. It quickly jumps up there, doesn't it? Yeah, sliding down that, um, down from that high platform there to get, uh, that position in now, but now Rafa has the rush ready, it's oh. actually just going to use the pressure of that rush beat to get those grab opportunities, You notice for another one. Yeah, you notice how that um, how that grab was also perfect, like the second grab was just like, Kozlina just dropped straight into it, could do nothing but, about it. Not gonna take damage from the rush at least. Yeah, that rush uh, just went from Rafa's side, now Rafa does not have that pressuring the back pocket. Yeah, arm weak on the right hand side slowly fades away, but Kozlina will have rushed ready soon, and in fact, I think Raph will be in care range here, if they're not careful. Yeah, and the arm is almost broken too, that's going to be dangerous. Raph almost gets the grab, but Kozlina gets the punch, and that is going to be a rush to KO. <laughs> We're going to game three. We're going to game three in the underground semi final. Both of these players want their top three finish so badly. Yet yeah, yeah, it shows, it shows right here, but Rafa just unfortunately just I don't think they were expecting the load to be as aggressive towards the end of that match They suddenly were really struggling and Kozlin are going to immediately announce a switch onto this third match We're going to see the switch to Twintel Yeah, and um Via Dolce and Buster Beach are going to be banned Let's see what uh, Rafa, Rafa picks, picks here. from this. Yeah, I mean, would you do you reckon that Rafa would pick Mausoleum again? Actually, yeah. There we go to Mausoleum, yeah. and I wonder <laughs> if Rafa is going to be back to the Cobra too, because this this is the deciding game three. There, yeah. this is still best of three. We just had best of five, but now we're going back to best of three for the underground semi yeah. semifinal. Yeah, the underground semi is the last best of three, so this point will decide. Who makes top three and who just misses out? It's this is gonna. Yeah. This, yeah, you never know how this is gonna go. I mean, we saw how it went on Mausoleum before, but even then, that wasn't just a straightforward set either because Gosselina got a perfect in there. So, but yeah, at this point, you want to go back to what you know works. Both players switching back. to... Gosselina actually going to go for a roaster set, which I don't see a lot from her. Yeah, first a tri-bolt for Kozlina. Rafa coming in with the pop and the what. So quick arm, slow arm, cardboard box. Oh, there's a nice <laughs> grab there from Kozlina on Rafa's approach. Kozlina actually being a lot more confident in taking center stage here. Yep, <laughs> Cobra almost got it back, but now they're both just fighting alongside the wall, and now Twintel will stay in that central platform. Gets knocked by the popper, but not completely. But there's the one-two poke that Rafa is looking for. And Rafa is now up close. But Kozalina is doing such a good job at, at the close range defense. Yeah, they have to be very careful here because Rafa is being relentless with this popper. 
the Watt is coming out, and obviously Kozlin has nothing that they can punch it down with. Um, both yeah, reverse... Those pop posters keep... They keep coming! Uh, Blood Clan is exchanging a rush trade down, but that Mega Watt way out, and yeah. that rush is going to go full through. Yeah, you you, you saw what Kozlin to fall, and it's like, we're both in the air, this will be great, but... Yeah, you're, you're punching into a, a megawatt rush and it's never going to work out for you. Because Lena is going to switch to the Thunderbird so you know exactly what her plan is. Try and hit in before the popper could do any kind of damage. Yeah, I Thunderbird switch up for game number two. Let's see how this plays out. But this is going to go around that megawatt. Oh, but there's a nice... Uh... Closer hit in there. Yep. Oh. There's a charge. <laughs> yep. It's the worst thing to get. It's like you see the what coming. It's shock damage, and it's it's never great. <laughs> it's like there's nothing you can do about it if you're fully committed. Both players do have the rush now, though. Let's where if uh this is going to ah uh, sorry. Let's see how this is going to go. Rafa is going to come out on top in that rush trade. Yep. And this will be a successful the, juggle. That should be a KO. That is a KO. Yeah. And this it's is gonna... going to be another way that this is going to work, and <sighs> wow, you have to. Rafa is going to take that series. Yeah, you have to feel for Kozlina. She just misses out on top three yet again. So so close, but it's going to end two one in Rafa's favor, and Kozlina will finish in fourth place. So close, yeah, but definitely good luck for her. She had an. Amazing run this time around, beating Shetty, beating Gam too. <sighs> but unfortunately, it's just not enough. Rafa is gonna see it through, makes it back into top three for the first time in well, like I said, ages. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's just sometimes it's sometimes how it goes, and it means that our underground final will be between Rafa and it will be B it will be B it will be between Rafikant. <clears throat> That's right, we are going to be seeing uh the run back from uh round three, which was on stream where Replicant did get the two one over Rafa. Where Rafa did win that one game in the Lola Pop Mare, but then lost two as Cobra, I believe. Uh -huh. So let's see if Rafa, what Rafa does here, if he um, stays with the Cobra, if he switches to the Lola, or um, or goes with the Spring. That I mean, that's an option too. I mean. I mean, especially with this now being best of fives, obviously that match, the set that we watched earlier was a best of three, and that was a 2-1. Now it's going to be a full-on best of five, so yeah, for that, well, this could be a match five if uh, things keep going the way it, the way it does. And uh, guess where we're starting? <laughs> oh, yeah, um, the classic. Yeah, <laughs> like I said, every now and then we have a stage that will just end the show for one specific for one specific day. Today it's Mausoleum. That's right. I mean, because I I hate sounding like a broken record, but we don't have Rafa the Ninja and we don't have Grim the Brass, so we actually just have a lot of Cobra versus Lola Pop, and when you have an aggro character versus a defensive character. Mausoleum is inevitable. <laughs> but it also means that there's a little bit more at stake now because you know, Replicant's looking for the third title and Rafa is, well, looking... I say Rafa's looking for the second title, but they just wanted to just get back into it. <laughs> like, they just wanted to get back onto the score sheet full stop. Rafa on the left with the Cobra coming in with what we've seen before, the uh, the Pop and the Watt. Raptorkin, Lola coming in with a Popper of their own and the Burchuk. Yeah, this is also just the same set we saw in Winterside too. Yep. And so far, Rafa is starting off on the offensive, firing in with the Watts and the Pops and uh, landing quite nicely at the moment. And there goes the rush, yes. just from that far range. Rafa <laughs> is going to be able to get the initial popper hit, but not going to be able to get the... Yeah, but uh, 
hey, damage is damage and they'll happily take it. I mean, the fact that they threw it out so quickly is pretty much their way of going, look, I could charge this up super quick. I don't mind throwing this out right here, right now. That's true, but this also means, wow, Replicant going to get a nice uh, proper juggle into that rush. But that also means, whoa, uh, that, uh, yeah, Rafa getting a nice combo there. And there's another grab. Another grab straight down onto the, onto the central platform. Big time damage, big time KO. And Rafa is going to take the initiative in the first point here. And but yeah, I would have thought Rafa would have saved that rush because it does beat out Replicant's rush in a one-on-one -on -one rush trade. There, there's the rush ready again for Rafa and it's going to be spent immediately, but Replicant manages to dodge to the side. Yeah, not gonna have any trouble this time round. Uh, does have the Burchuk on their side and not a popper. And again, that, <laughs> that central platform is so close to breaking, like one more little pounce on it will uh, will uh, change the complexion of the set a little bit. Rafa gonna yeah, be that frozen. Was a nice bird truck going around the side from Replicant, but sadly that rush is healed. Yeah. yeah, they got two freezes and thought, alright, let's see if Rafa's gonna blink. And unfortunately, Rafa did not, and is gonna fire in with a rush of their own. And that's just big time damage. 360, no scope. Oh, and that's a shock, and that's a KO. <sighs> One, two, down. And Rafa starts in a much better shape this time. Leads the set by 1.2-0. In a complete reversal from that series we saw earlier on stream, Rafa winning with the Cobra, being able to just use that megawatt so nicely to block the stuff that Replicant has and get those close range charged, uh, shocks into the grabs that was just a clink from rafa there it really was and so at this point in time gosh could you imagine if rafa makes this but like it's still early days it's still just the first match that has been happened and it oh, looks like we to lola too yeah since rafa has a little bit more uh room to play with here almost going back to um to play the play style that worked against Replicant in that earlier series. Let's see if Rafa also um, keeps that Ice Dragon on or not. And uh, yeah, I was gonna say we're all pretty much ready to go. I think they did say that it was gonna be Scrapyard, so yeah, it is. Everyone's ready, and yep, it's gonna be Lola Ditto. But there we see it in... Oh no. Oh no. Interesting sets from both sides. First of all, we have um, Rafa's uh, modified twi twin set with the Ice Dragon actually having a clap back in the back pocket here, which is um, interesting. But we also have Replicant's almost uh, Nuka Lola set with that home meter, except... Uh, using a Hydra instead of a tri -blast to try to catch uh, Rafa a bit easier. This is going to be a much different set than the one we saw in game one. Yeah, one's playing a semi-aggressive, semi-long-range game, and the other's playing with the missile. It's like, it's 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 going to be hard to predict how this goes. Both with Rush available, and that's going to be a nice long grab there from Rafa. Uh, but has well, So far, it's fairly equal, but you know... <laughs> Having a little bit of an inflatable dance, you two. Come on. <laughs> uh, oh, there's the rush. Actually, going it in as a trade, and Rafa manages to dodge Replicant's rush and puts Replicant on a magic pixel, and one more Ice Dragon will do it there. Yeah. <laughs> They're both coming in with an arm that is s just deals so much damage in a rush. The missile deals massive damage, but then again, so does the laser. It's like, it's easy to just forget about that, but the second the laser hits, it's like you realize how quickly it stacks up. But yeah, the bounce from Rafa to get to the side and then flinging with the rush was just beautiful for them, and the rest was uh, pretty much just looking for that one more poke. The dragon is just doing so much work here. 
There, that was a nice one too from Rafa. The other thing about Lollipop's movements, because Lollipop can jump so high and also to the side really quickly, means that you can put that dragon in such a weird angle where it becomes very difficult to block unless you're just healing. There was the rush from Rafa oh. Replicant though. It, it's not the full damage, but that is 390 yeah. damage. That just shows you how potent the full rush would be there. <laughs> yeah. Rafa trying to close in the distance to get that oh it's going to go to the side yeah they unfortunately whiffed just that little bit so Rafa's gonna have to do all of the hard work here whilst replicant is just slowly but surely charging that rush back up they're both on the cusp of critical Rafa is, uh, just oh does get the laser and oh gosh this is this is gonna be a nutty end to this isn't it this is just gonna if replicant misses the rush Rafa will take this goes, oh it misses well, this is Rafa's. Rafa's gonna try and close in the gap. There's no pillars to protect, and just the continuous onslaught gets the grab, deals the damage, and takes the initiative. They've almost got rush as well, so you might just see it get thrown out here. Oh! oh that Hiromi is going to break the grab. Rafa's going to try and punish. And <sighs> Rafa does get it with the, ch the Papa Rush. I feel like that was a little bit. I feel like Replica should have held back. Like you, you've got, you've got, you've got the lead. It's Rafa who has to come forward. You do not need to throw anything out. You had the health lead, but as we, as we've seen before, sometimes you just want to get that last poke to send it over. But the second Rafa saw it come out, it's like I can rush you. I, I can rush you because I can get to you quick enough. So and that's that how was it will still go. such a close end, though. That could have gone either way, especially with the shield damage that a rush like that can cause. And with that, Rafa takes a 2-0 lead. This is going to be interesting here because Replicant came second last time out and now has to do the reverse sweep against Rafa who is on a roll here right now in order to book their ticket back into the grand finals. Where for Rafa, well... They're aiming to get into the final for the first time in 26 cups, so the stakes couldn't be higher right now. Oh my word, this is going to be... Gosh, could you imagine if the grand final ends up being Rafa Jr.? <laughs> That's going to be double cover there. Um, DNA Temple Band, Classico. What are we going to see? What are we gonna see here? I'm actually needing to just... I might have to do a... Uh, oh, Buster! We haven't seen Buster Beach all day! <laughs> We're finally gonna go to the beach! And I think both players are still going to be staying Lola on this. So while we do see Buster as an aggro stage preferred by Cobras, neither player is playing... Both players are playing a defensive play style here. And yeah, we are seeing the double lollipop again. Are we going to see the same sets though? Um, kind of. Yeah, yeah Rafa just taking the Hydra in the back pocket is an alternative to the popper. Replica switching the light arm a bit. Going to also have that nade as in case uh, Replica needs a bit more explosive power and a bit more weight. Well, we're going to see how this plays out. Obviously it's a lot more smaller stage as well and obviously the one place you don't want to be is the heart park is down on that to south area just behind Rafa. Starts off with a good grab. Rafa, yeah, with a nice grab there. It's a, it's a bit in interesting to see because uh, I mean, this is the playstyle you associate with a player like Twin 5 from NA with that Biffler Hydra, but Rafa plays this set very aggressively and in your face, even with that long-range Ice Dragon. Jumping to the side there to get a nice freeze connection and going in for the grab there, Rafa has Replicant at less than a quarter now. And with 50 seconds to go, Replicant has to make a decision if they want to commit to any kind of aggressive play. Gets caught in with the rush, uh, not the rush, the grab is like, okay, you've had that shield up just a little too long, I'm gonna grab you now. 
and does mean that Rafa is in KO range. It's going to get caught oh, by one yeah. missile, but not the second. Does get a little bit of a hit there. Replicate, why are you dancing? You're oh, you're on the back foot here. But now Rafa gets the grab out of shield. Now, this is going to be interesting, I think. Well, we know Rafa is definitely a poke away. I think Rafa is as well, depending on what hits. And there's, oh, there's the Hydra. The Hydra. The Hydra coming in clutch again. Gosh, where do you go from here now? Replicate, do not early dance. <laughs> yeah, you should never be doing that. Why would you even think that's a good idea? There's an, another nice uh, Ice Dragon to start things off from Rafa. Three Ice Dragon hits actually, and another grab with that jump backwards. Lola does those jump grabs uh, out of shield so well. Replicate pivoting backwards a little bit, but still getting hit by Rafa on the approach. Now Rafa has the rush, Replicate also has the rush just now. Rafa is a rush away from getting their ticket into Grand Finals and does so! It there it is! So Replicant is going to finish in third this time round and for the first time in 26 cups! We're gonna see. We're gonna see Rafa make it to grand finals. In a complete reversal from that match, we winner sides. Yeah, that is a very clear 3-0 from Rafa there. Wow. And now Rafa is going to try to finish up that um gauntlet run by going against the other Cobra Junior. <laughs> Gosh, who would have thought that this would be what the grand final of the Challenge Cup would be looking like today? It's... <sighs> it really is now anyone's to play for here because we've got a little bit of history in the making now. So, Rafa is looking to win their second ever cup, their first time since, and I will... Well, when I keep saying from the second ever cup, what I mean by that is... It's been 40... <laughs> it's been 44 cups. 44 EU Challenge Cups since since Rafa last won this thing. <laughs> replicant, re replicant leaving with uh, cheeky... Um, I hate Lola message. <laughs> and that instantly getting pinned by Akram. Brilliant. Uh, it also so, should worth saying, by the way, that, you know, it's big enough for Rafa, it's also huge for Junior. Junior hasn't won, so we either get Rafa's second cup, but it's been an eternity since the last one, or Junior finally gets the win. <laughs> yeah, either, either way, it's going to be a Cobra, so I'll, I'll be happy. I'm not biased. I, I'm, not, I, I'm not a Cobra main, I don't have the KC in my username. Would you like to also hear something a little bit more interesting? Uh, sure. If Junior wins, it would be our 10th unique winner of this cup. Wow, alright. <laughs> That's not... nice. Yeah. We'd love to see it. <laughs> Every single... I think we, yeah. we, we entered this uh, situation um, a few weeks back, but it didn't quite play out, and it was like, aww. But uh, yeah, now... It just goes to show how quickly it can all turn around, and hey, guess what? We're starting where we left off. <laughs> On Buster Beach. Yes, we are. For those of you who are new, the grand final will go like this. It's still best of fives, but you'll now see that there is a W and an L next to our names here, and that's because Junior has made it this far without losing a set. So for Rafa to win, oh my gosh, there's a cut. Oh my gosh, that, that <laughs> is completely out of left field. Wow, all right, we got a well, you, way to stop my talk, Rafa. You, 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 you fiend, you fiend, you come in here with a get around the the guardian. Uh, I'm using ice dragons. Yeah. Actually, we're not going to see ice dragons. No, we're no, just... no, we're not. We're going to see roaster and hot slaps versus double toast. Uh, but yeah, for yeah. Rafa to win, they've got to beat Junior twice. And Junior not being able to go go for the Guardian in a matchup against a character with movement patterns like having to resort to that um, double toaster backup set instead. 
But it's, uh, but it's actually it's working out very well for Junior, getting a lot of hits on the Rafa. Yeah, fi yeah, it finally gets caught by the hot slaps, but uh, those of you who have never seen Coil play, if she charges up, she gets two arms on either side, and not just the one, so you get double the roaster or double the slaps, and a double curved arsenal is never great. <laughs> but that is not going to matter if there is a double the miss. <laughs> exactly. And so far, Junior has Coil's number. Big time grab. Gonna take the initiative in our Gets first a point. Very nice grab there to finish things off, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Junior definitely with the right call with the playstyle switch up, going from that defensive, slow and steady shield playstyle to just the aggro double guards. You have to do this against Coil. And yeah, both players with Rush Trust trying to find the right opportunity. Oh gosh, now we're gonna have double the Dragon Laser. That's just what that's just what Cobra needs. And it's also gonna get juggled for 375. Probably gonna bounce back though immediately with a grab. And not intimidated by your villainous ways. And it's gonna land 310 on that rush to boot. Yeah. And Rafa ending up in that hot pocket area of Buster Beach for just a little bit, but Coil gets out of that so easily. Now, we see that um, Ice Laser is so nice at catching uh, Junior's movements, and one more toaster will uh, will catch uh, Junior there. Junior is going to go back and switch to the tried and true the uh -huh. MM Guardian set, but is this going to work? Oh, well, it's the Ice Dragon. Well, the answer is not right now. You saw that Junior had the Guardian out. Rafa knew they couldn't punch through it, but the second the Guardian went back, it was just like, laser's gonna hit you for 280. <laughs> so it's just what the laser does. And Junior has still got a ways to go to get that charge up, and another key grab from Rafa, and uh, this has very quickly turned on its head, and Junior just can't seem to get any kind of semblance in this match here. There is a nice uh, shield cancel to start things off, though. Junior just needs to close the edge, but Coil is so good at getting away. Now Junior at the Magic Pixel, Rafa with the rush ready. There is going to be a grab from Junior. But there's the rush activation from Rafa, and that glove rush is going to go through. I just Rafa love... with the surprise character switch. Yeah, surprising, and it worked. They lost that first point, but very quickly turned it around. The second Rafa brought out the dragon, it was... A completely different match. I guess if there's anywhere where you just need to reach into that far back pocket to um, find something else that works, this is the time for Rafa. Now, is. Junior, remember, Rafa has two best of fives to wins. <laughs> yeah. Junior only has to win one best of five to take the series. Why do I get the feeling that a double that a mirror coil could be coming up? Uh, that. Why? Why I do I have not. this really bad feeling we're gonna see double coil? <laughs> and I was like, that's not gonna happen. Junior would never play coil. It's like, yeah, but it's still like. Oh, Raph is actually swapping Springman. So oh, oh, for good, fine goodness. All right, we're cool. Everything's cool. A crisis averted. I say crisis averted. I've got nothing against Coil. I do like Coil as a character. I absolutely adore her. But I think we all have in flashbacks to the NA top eight, where every where every other match was a Coil mirror. It was just like, guys, <laughs> please. Definitely, but yeah, it is going to be Springman against Kid Cobra. I guess Rafa does have a little bit more leeway here with that one game. It's not going to be the full default uh, Springman, but it is going to be a similar-ish set with uh, that Thunderbird as a curving arm instead of the Boomerang. Yep. Junior awesome. still with the tried and true Phalanx set, where it's like just this huge shield in your face <laughs> and the uh, um, Ram Ram to catch any attempt at getting around it. Yeah, and you saw it like, just like that. It's like. Shield comes out, Rafa went to the right, and uh, now you're caught in the other hot pocket you don't want to be in, which is uh, the pockets in Fire Dolls. The second you're in that corner, especially against a character as aggressive as Cobra, it's very hard to get out of sometimes. But uh, Rafa is back onto the center, but is going to get another ram to the side. 
And there's a nice jump in grab from Junior to take Rafa to the magic pixel almost. But there's a nice grab from Rafa to get around the shield. Both players do have rush that Rafa can take this back. Yep. And definitely now that Rafa dodged that rush. Yeah, Rafa was far enough back. They were able to just wait out the rest of that rush to come through. Now Junior has to play a very, very careful game here because Rafa has all of this buff and is going to fling in with the rush and take the initiative again in this second point. Yeah, catching Junior on the slide in there with those few frames of end lag there, Junior could not block in time that close to Rafa. Ah, Rafa. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm used to Rafa being in the grand final. Hey, hey, yeah, you'd be glad you didn't have to commentate the Rafa Rafa match. That was... Okay, yeah. <laughs> that did happen. <laughs> It was worse when Rifa had an A instead of an I in the name, because that was a thing. Oh gosh. Um. <laughs> anyway, back 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 to the match that's currently happening. Um, we're gonna see that Thunderbird still flying around, trying to get around that Guardian and succeed. Nice big time grab from Springman. Gonna send Junior on the cusp of the halfway mark, but uh, the Guardian's still doing its thing. <laughs> Springman just having to just dash around now and then, but. It's gonna find in with the rush. No, it's just gonna ignore that shield completely. Yeah, there, there's the rush activation. Ca catching Junior. Junior trying to go for the rush back, but that is, will not hit Rafa there. And Rafa going in up close, but that is a nice grab from Junior to get Rafa away. No. What a nice counter grab from Rafa to catch the dash. Yep. And gonna catch the toaster as well, and uh. Well, Rafa's doing exactly what they need to. It's now 2-0 in the grand final, and, uh, well, a coil and a springman victory. Rafa just needs one more, and, uh, hey, we're gonna have ourselves a bracket reset, and it'll be the first time in a while since we've had one of those. Rafa did so good there, pivoting around uh, that shield and hitting Junior on the weak side there. Let's see what else uh, Rafa has. It in the back pocket here. Yeah, go on. Let's go see on. if Junior is going to stay with the kick cobra, or going. To, if Junior is going to switch to one of those more pocket picks, like the Twintel. But either way, if uh, Junior loses this next one, we still have another best of five to go. Yeah, it's definitely not over yet. We're gonna see sparring, and we're gonna see Temple banned. Via is going to be picked again. <laughs> In all caps as well. Junior is just not happy. He he wants this win. Up oh, there. <laughs> and we're gonna see and Junior hey! switch it up. It, I would, don't tell me we're gonna see a parabola. Please don't bring a parabola into this. No, there isn't. Thank okay, goodness. Okay, no we're good. We're cool. We're cool. Slacks is not gonna rejoice just yet. <laughs> what is the mummy gonna bring to the table, yeah? Be... He's from Junior's side. Double chillers are gonna try and just... Wow, <laughs> just immediately roll out with first. Like, hey, you wanna come through? Nah, I feel like... What, what is happening here? Wow! Dude, the, what the, in the, the world was that start? Over, over again. <laughs> Rafa just... slowly starting to get in, into distance and getting those one-two combos with the charged Thunderbirds. But there's a nice one-two from Junior. And you notice every single time Rafa goes down, Junior just immediately heals back up just a little bit. And it's like you cannot allow Mummy to just start slowly healing back up. It's it's not great. Uh, Rafa had enough time to think about whether they wanted the rush or not. Instead, went for the grab. Oh, but there's the rush. It is trying to get it off the uh, rope going down. But there's Junior's counter rush, and this one is going to hit. Two hundred and eighty. Junior has the health lead. But Ra one charged hit from Rafa is going to be deadly. Oh, oh and the... Two chillers. <laughs> this, like, you can't even call that a 1-2. They both pretty much hit at like identical times. There was no way Rafa was surviving that. Rafa's going to bring out a Hydra now, so all hot uh, all hot gloves for sure. Going to try and roast down this uh, mummy as quickly as possible. Junior, obviously not going to stick with the chillers because they want to keep Springman as slow as possible. I mean, that Hydra is fairly deadly against Mummy too. I mean, Mummy does have a fairly big body, but as we know from uh, Little Red Riding Hood, the bear for me to hit you with. 
and the healing is still being applied. Rafa does have Rush and is keeping Mummy in this pocket, but Junior really doesn't matter. And instead, Junior actually just walks up and says, yeah, sure, hit me in the face with that. Why not? <laughs> yeah, catching Junior on the dash in this. Rafa trying to push against that turn yeah. Mummy, but no, that is going to be a 200 damage grab. Those grabs from Mummy always just look so painful. They really do. This is big time slam dunk. Junior does have Rush available, commits to it, lands it, wins it! And there we have the big time Rush. I just said big time Rush. Yes you <laughs> did, yes yeah. you did. <laughs> Goes on record. Sorry my friend. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. And with that, Junior is going to bring this back up. Junior has to do the reverse sweep if they want to win this. And, uh, well, I guess it takes a Master Mummy to do it. It's 2-1 in the Grand Final. And Junior is coming and what with switches left, right and centre now. So we saw the Mummy come out. Mummy wins it. Now we're going to see the Twin Tail come out for Junior. Not, not even waiting for uh, Rafa's counterpick stage here, just straight up announcing it. Yeah. I mean, Let's see what Rafa has in mind now. Yeah. Because obviously it's like, you announce the character switch before the stage gets picked, and it's like, it gives your opponent a chance to, uh, t to try and find a way of taking advantage of that, and Rafa's response is going to be to go to Mausoleum. I was wondering where Mausoleum was. Yeah. But there it is. And now Rafa is going to go back to the Cobra. Yep, and Junior pretty much called out immediately, he's like, yeah, you're probably going to bring this back, aren't you? Yep, yes he does, and guess what? The what is there? Will the what come out immediately? Yes it does. Junior, meanwhile, is going to come in with a Shack Ram and a Roaster, so we'll see if the Ram can curve around. Uh, but again, remember that popper is incredibly quick, and look, already, it's like, yes, it hasn't charged up properly, but every time it's poked on through, look at the damage it's doing. And my goodness me, Rafa is just... <laughs> Rafa's, uh, yeah, Rafa's wow. looking for a perfect! Rafa is literally looking for a perfect and there it is! That's going to be a perfect, yeah. I, I was trying to think of, like, this feels like deja vu, and yeah, we did see in round 2, Rafa got, getting a 2-0 against Shady, who played a very similar twin tail style with the roaster, with the chakrams. And Rafa was able to just cut through that like butter with the megawatt. There's a confirm. Oh my goodness, B. They're not gonna do two perfects back to back. That would be absolutely outrageous. Nope, not no, this Junior time. Junior finally does land, scores the 300. There will not be any of that this time round. But they've still got a ways to go if they want to bring this back. Yeah, Junior is able to get some damage on, but it's still on the back foot. Rafa gets a grab combo. That's going to be enough. Wow. wow, just turning things around completely. Not even close in that match. The slam dunk bounces off the trampoline. Rafa is going to win that 2-0. Rafa is going to take the set three points to one. We're going to remove the W. We're going to remove the L. Because my friends, would you believe it? It's time for a rare and very dangerous bracket reset. Cue the air horns. This, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> this is what we've all been waiting for oh here. Oh my god. I mean, this is a reset here, but Rafa does have a lot of them going for him. We'll have to see if Junior can turn things around because. I, I mean, that was. Uh, that was hard fought, though. But this could still go a lot of different ways. It really can. I mean. We saw the switches coming up. I mean, the Master Mummy switch worked. Like, I, I think we were surprised to see Master Mummy in of itself, but the matchup worked beautifully for Junior. But the second there was like, oh yeah, you can pick. Oh yeah, I didn't ban Maus Mausoleum, so, um, oops. <laughs> and just Kid Cobra, Watt, Popper, Mausoleum. It's, it's, you, you don't want to fight on that. <laughs> it just seems to be Rafa's winning combination. Sorry about that, gotta be right back again while well, uh, both players also take a bit of a moment to yeah. cool down <laughs> and get ready for this reset. That's alright, take your time, it's, uh, it's not a problem. 
we got plenty of time to kill here as we ready ourselves up for a bracket reset. <laughs> like I said, it's been quite a while since we had one of these. Uh, Rafa is determined to uh, not allow... Uh, well, I say, I say not allow history to uh, carve a new chapter, but at the same time, it's... It would still be absolutely massive here. Like, Rafa would only be winning this for the second time, and it would end a drought of 44 cups with no wins and Junior just looking for the first win by default so whatever happens it's gonna be historic and uh, Junior's gonna make absolutely sure that uh, Buster and Mausoleum are both not in play at all. We saw some interesting switches like we saw like on the very first play Rafa coming in with Coil and the second you see the Ice Dragon on Coil, you you know things are going to get several times harder than uh, than you want to expect. But uh, that's just how it goes. But yeah, it just didn't seem to go Junior's way for the first couple matches. They managed to turn it around with Master Mummy, just being able to just straight up outbox Springman in a variety of ways. But even then, it was still a very close match. The Springman was still in that from start to finish. And the switch to Twintel just it just didn't work. I mean, Megawatt Popper, Kid Cobra, it's 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 a scary it's a scary combo. It looks like our first match is gonna be on DNA Lab, so that's where we're gonna start things off. Neither of our players need to announce a uh, a change in character because it's a brand new set. That's right, and I'm so excited to see how this is going to go. now that both players have had just a little bit of a moment to take a breath. And we are going to go and see Rafa Springman again. Yep, Rafa with the Springman, Junior with the Cobra. There's that Guardian in the back. Will we see it come out straight away? Yes, we do. Ram Ram Guardian. Now, this is a repeat of what we saw in Game 2, I believe, in that, that first set here with Rafa going for uh, the Springman against Junior's uh, standard set. Honest stage, I guess that was on Via Dolce though, so this is going to be slightly different here. Yeah, just a little bit different. Junior has a lot more tubes to work with, but he's going to lose one of them and get grabbed in the process. Um, does manage to get a little bit of a tag with the Ram, but nothing that they would have liked more than anything. Gets the shock, but I don't think, yeah, Rafa's just going to get hidden by that tube. Rafa gets the shock now though, and is able to manage to capitalize off that grab. Gets another one! It's just all... And that is just going to swing things hugely into Rafa's favor. Yeah, it's just all going away, and that's There's another! It's another, that's three shock grab combos in a row for Rafa, and comfortably takes the first point in this, uh, in this match. They both will have Rush so available, but Junior, don't do it, Junior. Oh my goodness, me as a double Guardian. <laughs> double the Guardian, like double the fun, I actually gets a shock. <laughs> oh, there's the counter rush. That's going to hit. <laughs> Freeze. Whoa, and another grab. What is Junior doing? Junior is playing. Is Junior's playing out of their minds right now. The double guardian setup is at this right is working. That's going to be another shock. But again, thankfully for Rafa, uh, for Rafa was on just the right, just the right place for the tube to protect. But one more shock will likely send this out of out of contention here. And that's another grab. Oh, wow. <laughs> one hundred and eighty seals that in Junior with a double guardian call that. Junior Rafa did get some chip damage there, but that was what this can perfect. Oh Junior my. not going to go for the six that we're just going to It's a straight up boxing match. It's a straight up boxing match now. What in the world is the start of this reset? My word. So this it's gonna one of those toasters that fits four slices of bread. The yeah. quadruple toaster. Yeah, <laughs> the, the quadruple toaster. Um, Rafa will have a rush ready to go. Junior not too far behind. There's no more tubes to hide around, so it re really is just a straight up boxing match. And Junior is going to get caught with 280 from that. Yeah, Rafa catching Junior just off the tail end of that um, jump there. 
<laughs> now Junior does have the health deficit, but does have the rush ready to turn, turn things around. It's going to be a bit difficult against Rafa with the deflects. This but there is a nice hit to start things off, and now Junior does have the center stage control. Is going to grab into the deflect. Rafa is able to escape that rush. Doesn't avoid the uh, the quick follow up one two. They're just looking for one more punch. Finds it, and Rafa is going to take the initiative in the bracket reset and leads it just like they did in the first one with a point to nil. But I mean, we can agree that Junior also kind of won that game too with the, that double guardian showing. <laughs> the double guardian play was outrageous, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> They're so scary, those guardians with that intimidating face just slowly creeping towards hear the Jaws music in the background yeah. of your in the and it's, back of your head. It's a great counter rush tool as well, because it's like, hey, you're gonna rush me? I got two big shields you wanna punch through fast. <laughs> but... Sparring Temple banned from Rafa and Junior just so comfortable on Via Dolce is what? just going to pick it for the third time in the Master Mummy this time? No. Are you gonna see it? No, it's going to be the Cobra again and it's going to Spring Man again. Uh, so, Cobra going to have that Guardian on on the back. Are they going to spring it out again? Yes, they are. Ram Ram Guardian will start us up. Thunderbird Toaster again. Rafa just not going to really switch anything there. Yeah, it's just going to be all reliable for both of them. Junior gets the shot to start things yeah. off. And that's a, going to be a nice quarter of Rafa's health. Yeah, Rafa just took their eye off that shield for just a little too much. The second it goes out of your viewpoint, it's... It can just catch you off guard, and that's exactly what it's designed to do. I'm weak on the right hand side, but it does fade away in time. Junior yeah. doing a very, very nice job just going back and forth, but Rafa is slowly gaining distance here and pushing Junior into. Uh, I, I forgot, I forget what it's called, the lower section of the hot, um, the hot pocket. Here, okay. <laughs> the hot pocket, except, except sweet. It's a sweet I, I believe I, tr I tried to start the term cavity for this, but it just didn't catch on, I wonder yeah. why. Nice, nice try. It, it's a nice try, but sometimes it's just not gonna happen. Junior is okay. gonna probably look to keep this rush into the next point and give themselves a little bit of advantage. Rafa is gonna start hitting a lot harder here, so he's just looking for a ram ram to hit, but this is so slow... going very well to come back, but no Junior is yet. Yep, Junior gets the grab, that's exactly what they needed, and puts them right back into contention. And, let's see, both players are still going to be sticking with the same sets, and, you see, again, we're, we're just trying to see both players take control of that center stage, it's so important in Via Dolce more than other maps. Junior gets it with a nice grab, and now... Rafa is in the corner, oh. Junior gets a nice jump grab. Yeah, it's gonna give Rafa a chance to free themselves up, but immediately taking away another grab. Junior's not relented, and Rafa says, alright, anything you could do, I could do just as well, but it is gonna fall foul to the rush and go down to 355. One more hit will take it for Junior, but Rafa is in that comeback mode and does have the rush ready, so could still turn things round majorly is going to go for the rush off of Junior's unshielding and that is going to bring Junior almost to ha to quarter health. It, oh my goodness me. This is will be a comeback and a half for Rafa if this can This is if, what Spring Man does in that comeback mode. <laughs> Junior's just looking you for one more poke and it's not gonna happen. Another Thunderbird shock into the grab to secure Rafa. Come back secured there for Rafa. Had to do that the hard way and did so in style. Junior not going to drop that Guardian anytime soon. Is committed to it. Full calls and again gets another shock. But they'd already thrown out the Guardian so they couldn't do anything. I don't think Junior expected that Guardian to hit. Wasn't prepared for the grab follow up there at all. <laughs> That's sometimes the, uh, the dilemma you have running Guardian. is like... It's like, oh, that would shock. I'll throw it back out the second I get it back. And it did shock, and it's like, oh, damn it. <laughs> um, but it's going to be a nice good grab, 175 again. Both with Rush available. Who's going to blink first? It will be Junior, but it's Chip and nothing more. 
There's a nice uh, grab from Rafa to punish that rush, and it's going to go for the rush in response. Junior manages to dodge out of that, though. It's just about as well, like they blocked it initially and gets the grab as well. Shark grab confirmation, Rafa again entering the comeback mode. Junior we does- cannot count this one out th though yet. There is the um, charge Thunderbird into the grab and like you literally just saw Rafa with a nice comeback there. But there, Junior gets another hit in though. Yeah, this is and not where Rafa wants to be. It's stuck in that corner and especially with Junior almost with Rush, does have it now. Rafa has to play this very carefully and is gonna go down to the grab. Creates the Rush, shields a little bit too long, gives Junior that window and we have a series. This is back to 1-1. One, one. Yeah. One apiece in this set. The previous one ended 3-1 in Rafa's favor, but Junior is determined to not let that happen again. Scrapyard and DNA were immediately banned, and hey, guess where we're going? <laughs> it's Mausoleum. Yep. I don't think anybody is surprised to hear that. Uh, no announcement from Junior, so they're not switching anything. So, And if you're Rafa, well, you're not going to not pick... Kid Cobra because this is Mausoleum we're talking about. <laughs> what an appropriate stage pick. My voice is dying. Ah, <laughs> uh, see? see? Alright. <laughs> Your voice is dying. You said it would be better with a co-commentator. Okay, yeah, this this is true, but still, it's been two and two hours and twenty minutes. This now, is a very interesting pick from Rafa, though. There's an ice dragon. Yeah, there's an ice dragon in the back. So Springman versus Cobra. Toaster and the Ice Dragon for Rafa, and obviously Junior not going to really change anything there. And we'll see how Rafa deals with this, especially on a stage like Mausoleum. It's it's an odd pick, but it's a it's a pick. It could still work. I mean, I do play uh, Springman with Dragon myself, and I know this can work, especially if you're trying to get around it, a shield arm. Where, but but Rafa, the the thing that Rafa needs the most is distance. You're not gonna I would have expected get... this to come out in a round after the trampoline gets broken, mm. but not before. Junior is just uh, using the fact that this uh, Ice Dragon exists to try to get in close, but Rafa's getting a bunch of nice pokes out afterwards. Oh! Rush. Yep, Dragon Rise finally... Yeah, bit of patience from Rafa, just waiting for the shield to go down. Junior into critical condition, and uh, all Rafa's looking for is another good couple pokes, and they'll take this. A very nice uh, deflect from Rafa there onto Junior's jump grab earlier. Junior just trying to make things work, but Rafa is able to... There's the trampoline break! This is going to benefit Rafa so much with that Ice Dragon, and Junior not being able to um, approach as easily. Yeah, there's 20 seconds to go, and Rafa finally gets the KO punch. It's exactly what they needed, and they've set them up perfectly here, so expect to see the Dragon coming back in. Will Junior decide to switch anything up? No, it's going to stick with the Guardian Ram. So they've got a plan, they're committed to it. And they're going to immediately. the Dragon, but this is the grab. Now, both players do have the rush now. Oh, well, that, will that reach in time? No, it will not. And that's going to be a big time punish. But the Dragon well, did get it. Exactly. With that long range grab, but. Rafa being able to punish that with the rush. Junior able to get the rush too. And so. this and this is where Junior is their most effective. They've closed in the gap. They're keeping it completely in Rafa's face and not allowing them a chance to poke with that dragon. Rafa into critical. Big time grab from Junior. And they're just looking for one more poke and there it is with the ram. Well, once Junior was able to close that distance, so Junior went off. <laughs> yeah, it's you, the one thing you cannot allow Junior to do is just be in your face. The second he's gotten you down, there's nowhere for you to run, and especially with the trampoline out, Rafa is going to drop the dragon immediately. Rafa going to switch to uh, that set with the Thunderbird that we saw was so effective in past games. It's going to be a little bit uh, better at that close range too. <laughs> the Guardian's still so scary the closer it gets, he's like, you know, that's what it's designed to do. And neither of them are really getting a punch through at the moment. Yeah, so, both players just using that tra trampoline to uh, keep distance here and farming up rush, but now both players have the rush. 
Oh, that. Was training rush, though, but Junior able to stay safe with yeah. those trampoline jumps. Yeah, that was perfect from Junior. Gone to the trampoline, baited the uh, the rush out of Rafa, sprung as high as possible, and there was no way Rafa was going to protect themselves from that. Junior has advantage as we approach 40 seconds to go. Junior did get into Rafa's face as a response uh, there, but resetting back to um, opposite sides of the trampoline now, though, because yeah. it does kind of work if Rafa does not have the Ice Dragon. Yep, and Rafa on the cusp of critical, and Junior is just looking for another good, solid pokes. Maybe even get a shock to just completely throw Rafa off. That, however, is going to go the other way. Thunderbird snuck on through. As we approach, 10 seconds to go. Junior will have rush. There's the rush for Junior. Rafa will get it. As no, Rafa doesn't get it in time and jumps into the rush. And Junior is going to start a comeback of their own. They are one win away from their first ever Challenge Cup. This is looking dicey. After that uh, set we saw earlier with... Uh... Rafa going 3-1, we now see Junior going up 2-1. Oh my word. But yeah, I was like, I was looking at the rush counter and it's like, Rafa almost had those ways to go, but Junior would just got it in time and you, you knew what Junior in, in their head was like, if I don't use rush now, I'm gonna regret this because Rafa will use theirs the second they have the chance. So it had to come out and we're gonna see Buster Beach come up for the next pick. An interesting thing here, I think Rafa you did use a different character in each game for um, the last series, but this series it's just been Springman after Springman. Oh. Except now we are seeing a Dr. Coil back. Oh no, here come that coil. That that constant um, picking Springman did allow Junior to adapt a bit, so maybe a character swap is just what Rafa needs. Yep. And we're going to see the Ice Dragon coming in with that Ice Dragon Roaster. And funnily enough, the Junior is going to bring in a Toaster of their own. So we'll see how this ends up playing out. But the last, but Junior knows how this goes. They cannot afford to let Coil start wailing in with these Dragons. Yeah, I believe the round that Junior played with the Double Toasters was the most effective. Just needing a lot of aggression to combat Coil. Arm weak on the left hand side for Coil. If this pressure from uh, Cobra keeps up, they could see it go down, but it's going to slowly fade away now. Junior has Rush ready to go. Both now with Rush ready to go. Junior sa saving that Rush a little bit because Junior is able to confirm that off of the. Um... Oh, but no. I, Ma I was saying going to say that the Guardian could block the Rush, but. Rafa catches Junior with the Guardian extended. No opportunity to counter rush there. Having said that, Junior not out of this at all. The grab immediately, oh, two grabs immediately switches that back on its head. And Junior now has a health advantage along with Rush in the back pocket. Definitely. And now Rafa is in the Buster Pot pocket there. Especially now. Junior. Junior. Oh, my God. oh, no. Oh. Another grab. There's the grab to get Rafa out of the sticky situation. But that is an extended dragon. That is going to allow the glove rush to connect, but a little bit too far away. Guardian, though. Yep, 10 seconds to go. Junior has health lead. They just cannot afford to take any further damage. They should be fine from here. Scores the KO. And it means that Junior is on championship point. One more round. One more round. One more round and Junior ends. A very, very long time, a long time coming. Junior's gonna come in, toast the Guardian. Rafa is gonna come in with that Roaster and a hot slap this time round. So no Dragon this time, realizing it's just not working out. Rush comes out, scores, big time, 275. Yeah, that is going to be able to catch Junior on the extension there. So Rafa has managed to get a fairly nice health lead now, but now that the Rush is gone, will Rafa be able to maintain it? Or will Junior be able to take it back like last game? Junior trying for a sneaky shield cancel into grab, not being able to get that. Rafa gets a grab of his own there. Two toasters ready. Junior is going to be able to get that rush off of Rafa's dash. It's still anyone's to play for, but all Rafa is looking for is another solid poke. They'll have rush. They'll probably want to try and take this. Oh, no, no, they rushed into it. They moved straight into the Guardian. They shocked themselves. No rush. It gives Junior a chance to win this entire thing. If they can find Junior another poke. Connected. 
Rafa tries for the grab. Rafa gets the second grab. <laughs> and just barely gets round two. How in the world did Rafa get that? How did he get away with that? First and foremost, he activated Rush and then moved into the Guardian, but somehow holds on. It's one apiece. It's still championship point for Junior, but Coyle starts with a long range grab. The pineapple grab. Well, it's not Cobra, but it'll do. Um, <laughs> Rafa, uh. Now trying to keep Junior at a distance, Junior is almost at that rush, has that ready, just looking for an opportunity to use it, but Rafa just trying to keep distance, not letting Junior use that, gets a nice grab in, woven there. It's like he noticed that they go for the grab and the Guardian is out at its furthest reach because they've got enough time to get it there, both with rush available now, but Junior is still poking through with this toaster and commits there's to the rush. Grab. I mean there's a rush, it's going to hit. 345 damage, Rafa has one of their own, commits to it now, but it's not gonna hit it! Oh, actually does get a bit, 190, that could be the difference! Junior trying to counter it, but that weight on the glove rush was too much. They are both on similar health here with 40 seconds to go, Rafa dips into critical first, they cannot afford to take an another touch, poke! Sir. One more hit, we'll send this to Junior, and Junior does it! For the first time ever! Junior adds their name to the winner's book. They win the 46 Let's Challenge go. Cup. Junior takes the first EUAC. Oh my goodness me. We have our 10th unique winner of this competition. Junior, your junior arms guardian emotes. Oh Trims. my word. What an amazing set. Junior lost 3-1 in the grand final initially. Rafa forcing the reset. But it finally went away from them. Junior is not going to let that go to match 5. <laughs> oh my word. And for Rafa, well, I mean, it's their first final appearance in 23 cups. But it will still be the only win they've had. <laughs> But that's fine, well we will played. take that. What a competition, what a tournament. Very well played on both players' fronts there. Oh, wow. wow. Oh, what what can you even say? And heck, the t heck, if you look at the top four, if you look at the top four that we have right now, first place junior, first time ever. Rafa comes in second place, for their first grand final appearance in 23 Cups. Third place was Replicant, dropping down from second last time out. And Carselina just missing out on top three, um, coming in home in fourth. It's been an amazing competition from start to finish. Tomashi, you were right. You, were, you said that this was going to be one of those tournaments, and it was. <laughs> this uh, was a blast to commentate. I'm glad I was able to commentate this with you. I'm very glad that, uh, that you decided to come in for this as well. I'm more than happy to have you, so... I think we can both say we had a good good time. <laughs> wow, wow. Yes, definitely. Uh, and with that out of the way with, the tournament is done. And we're going to bring this to a close. So, my good friend Penzo, where can people find you? Uh, where can people find me? Um, my uh, Twitch channel where I sometimes stream, but not very often, is Penzo underscore KC. As is my Twitter. I believe they are... Both uh, on screen right now too. Yeah, they certainly are. Much like mine and as well. And you can definitely find me in the EU Arms Discord as well. Yeah, I think again we're all in there. Obviously, if you see anybody with a red title, chances are it'll be one of us because you know I've got it because hey, I'm a caster. Yay! Because <laughs> I do this all the time. Um, but yeah, I'll gladly have you back if you're not competing. So. And uh, also, if you want some uh, mentoring, I'm doing that over now in the Polaris server. Oh, that would so, be a yeah. I would definitely too. definitely recommend people do that. And yeah, with that, we are gonna be all done and does it. So thank you all so much. Hopefully you've enjoyed yourself, whether you've been a spectator or a participant. We'll see you again in two weeks' time for the next installment. It'll be the forty seventh cup, where well, we'll see if Junior wants to try and retain this, or if we're gonna have another episode like this where the reigning champion doesn't take part. We're gonna find out. But also remember to come back on Thursday for the first to ten randomizer. That will be a lot of fun. That will be between Riffa and Iceman. Until then, I've been Tameshi Kanjo.
I've been Penzo. And we will bid you all a good day. Take care. Stay safe. And stay fresh. And remember, arms nice. <laughs> yes, arms nice.